generic background music, as this is probably going to be going up on YouTube as well. But if you missed it, uh, the VOD, of course, is up yesterday. It's the beginning of Season 2. You'll be able to see as we went through every single team to take a look at how they were set up, how they were looking, heading into Season 2. I'm excited to see how this one plays out. We're going to get right down to business. I fixed the lines. I fixed the scouting and everything as I said I would. Let's march on. Let's see what happens. Season 1 Winnipeg Jets, best team in the Western Conference, swept in the first round by the Nashville Predators. The Colorado Avalanche winning that Stanley Cup. Coming back from three games to one down to beat... My God, the injuries. To beat the Washington Capitals in seven. Without Nathan McKinnon. <laughs> so, it was incredible. Incredibly done. Will I ever do another normal fantasy draft? I mean, probably. Is that what I'm doing now? Who's to say? Chris Andrews, how are you? Good to see you as always. Jack Hughes was traded to the Dallas Stars for Jake Ottinger and Thomas Harley. Harley Thomas. Hello, Deke Slayer. I don't think you have any learning to do. Between your own success in New Jersey and the success of one Mike Milbury, who has somehow found success on both of our channels, <laughs> I think you'll be all right. I don't know. That's fantastic. Again, we will be getting into playing Super Mega sometime soon. I don't know uh, when for sure, but it is going to happen. I do not want Carl Gunnarsson. Thank you very much. God. New Houston episode I'm aiming for tomorrow as well. There was supposed to be one today. Uh, but again, I slept. How long did I sleep for? <laughs> it was tw no, it was over 12 hours. 12 hours minimum. Clean through. No waking up for the bathroom. No waking up and rolling back over. Just clean through. I fucked up my schedule to make sure I could cover that ECL Elite Final. And uh, it finally caught up to me. My, my brain was just like, yep, you're sleeping for a long time. Have fun with it. And I did. Tell me what sleep's like. Sounds like heaven. I mean, Deke, even if I tell you, you'll never know again because you're a father. <laughs> you're not allowed to sleep again. Ever. No sleeping. No touching, no sleeping. Oh, God. Stop asking for trades. Stop it. Stop it. Oh, God. Look what money said. Charge your videos to 16, just one second. Oh, see money you're too kind. Cody, thank you for pointing that out. I totally missed that for a second. Full-time streamer, get a real job. Ah, <laughs> uh, see money greatly appreciate that. It's interesting to me how many people have been like, yeah, I've been watching since, since NHL 15, and it's like, fuck. <laughs> That's insane. Absolutely insane. A parent can sleep just after the kids have grown up and moved out. Yeah, but at that point, at that point, you know, I, I don't even know. Oh, God. Hanson Harkins. That's, that's a solid minimum 18 years without any sleep. Like, what is that going to do to Deke Slayer's <laughs> mental health and well-being? Oh, God. Deke, how many, what year did you guys win the cup in for Millbury mode? It wasn't that long from what I could tell. It doesn't feel like there was any way you were 10 years into that. Well, then again, you said Tavares was there, but he was 36, so what would the math on that be? What was that, like seven years? I don't even know how old John Tavares is right now. <laughs> That's insane. Do I have a favorite NBA team? The Boston Celtics. We are going to sim to January 1st. That'll be about the midway point of the season, and we'll take a look at what's going on around the league with the team and such. The lead! Drop it! That two-month prime sub. Respecting the content. We're not burying the lead here. <laughs> that was the only that was the only thing that was the only place I could go with that. <laughs> I appreciate you, is what I am saying. I think I just healthy scratched Villy Heinola, but is he gonna develop anyway? Probably not. So hey, what's the big deal? Tavares is 29 or 30. See, I couldn't remember if he was like 31 already. Because it wouldn't surprise me. It's one of those things like, oh yeah, John Tavares is 31. Yeah, it feels like he's been around forever. Sure. Sure. I can I can I can believe it. I can buy it. 
Well, now Jack Hughes is going to be in Dallas. I can't wait. Again, Robin Leonard and Tyson Berry going to Ottawa. There's a lot of interesting teams to look at right now, and I can't wait to see how this league's playing out. All right, so we are just shy of the midway point for most teams, but some teams do have 41 games played. So let's take a look here, shall we? I'm going to go on this side so you guys can see a little bit more. But the Jets, yet again, regular season success, 26-9-1. Minnesota, Colorado currently in the playoffs, as are St. Louis. Chicago made the playoffs last year. Uh, Dallas! That Jack Hughes trade. That Jack Hughes trade is uh, not paying off for them. They get rid of their best defensive, best young defensive prospect and goaltending prospect. I mean, I'd say Harley Thomas has a good shot at being their best defensive prospect. But, uh, yeah, Jack Hughes not having a fun time in Dallas. In the Pacific, it is Calgary, Anaheim, and San Jose. Vancouver also in Los Angeles and the Vegas Golden Knights. Not doing all that well. And then for the Atlantic Division, Ottawa! With Tyson Berry and Robin Leonard from hot garbage to first place in the Atlantic. It's amazing what a goaltender and Tyson Berry can do for you. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> Toronto, Tampa, all's there. Montreal's in. Uh, Detroit and Buffalo still hot garbage. But the Ottawa Senators are turning it around in one season. And in the Metro, it's Columbus, Philly, Washington, and Pittsburgh. As, unfortunately, for the New York teams and New Jersey, it's not. It's not looking too good. New Jersey, dead last. Dead last. So the best team in the league, you are Winnipeg Jets. Columbus, Philly, Ottawa is top four. <laughs> the bottom teams right now, New Jersey, LA, Dallas, Nashville, and Vegas. That is absurd. Let's take a look at goals, four per game. League's worst offenses, New Jersey, Nashville, Anaheim, Detroit, and LA. The best offense is Winnipeg, Washington, Boston, Philly, Carolina. Worst defense is New Jersey's allowing over four goals against per game. Dallas, Nashville, New York, and Vegas up there. Best uh, goals against average, Columbus, Philly, Arizona, Washington, and Toronto. Play the rock clip. Play the rock clip. Oh, what's happening around the league here? I mean, for us at least, I don't want to kind of, you know, not put an emphasis on our team that we're controlling here, but I mean, Shifley, Connor, Wheeler, that's our top line, and they're crushing it. Line is just under a point per game on the second line. Eller's doing well, little. Secondary scoring's hurting a little bit. Actually, not really. I mean, Mikheyev's on a 40 point pace. That's pretty good. So, my mom broke her elbow today. Oof. Oof. How'd she manage to do that? That sounds horrible. Uh, Bianca Morrissey doing well. Sammy Nico, Brendan Dillon aren't a great pairing, but you know what? We got to go for it. And. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, Packeroff, what's happening? So, um. Laurent Brassois is incredibly inconsistent. That's all I can gather from there. Brassois is incredibly inconsistent. Let's look around the league here. Start off with the forwards. Again, midway point of season two. So, uh, Rantanen, McKinnon, Kachuk, Marshawn, McDavid, Shifley, Pasternak, Ovechkin, and Dreisaitl leading the way. Backstrom, Connor, a lot of players over a point per game at this point. William Nylander, Pettersson. Goal scoring king right now is Rantanen. Pettersson's up there. McDavid, Marshawn, Kachuk, McKinnon, Ovi. Kucherov and Alex Turcott, the assist leader, Connor and William Nylander at 35 each. Alex Nylander's also up there. That's just not fair. That's just not fair. Huberto's up there. Patrice Bergeron. Benjamin, thank you for the follow. I do appreciate it. Uh, we don't really need to look at the PIM leader right now or anything like that. We'll look uh, for totals here. Let's look at defensemen. Well, the Tyson Berry signing working out quite well for Ottawa so far. He's second in points, just two behind John Carlson at the top of the list. You have Eric Carlson, Yandel, Krug, Burns, OEL, Giordano, and Theodore, good old Oliver Lossom Tossum. Frankie, what's happening? 
Goal scoring leader's got to be a creative player, right? No. Three-way tie. Rasmus Anderson, Tori Krug, and Eric Carlson. I'm getting the assist later. Would have been John Carlson. Goaltenders. The winningest is Connor Hellebuck. No surprise. Katahat up there in second. Grubauer, Merzlikens, and Dubnik have done that. So that's fantastic. And for the shootouts, there's no way Turcotte will even reach an overall close to what you got him to. What have I set Alex Turcotte to by default? Like a 79? Something like that? Hmm. There's no way he'll reach an overall like that. Uh, so you mean through EA? Who consistently overrate players? Or you're meaning to tell me that Alex Turcotte, who had 26 points in 29 games at 18 years old in the NCAA, isn't going to be that good? Bet. Bet. Uh, four shutouts for Dubnik. Jake Allen still doing well. Save percentage. So Carter Hart was robbed of the Vesna last year. He might win it this year, but God damn it. Columbus's goaltending. Merzlikens and Corpusalo. Good lord. I mean in your franchise mode. Well, it's fucking franchise mode. This player won't reach a 90. Okay? <laughs> Most players won't. That's not exactly a tough bet. <laughs> Robin Leonard is also well up there for Ottawa. Again, what a signing for them. Oh, Frank, we hit that. If I play franchise mode with my updated rosters, we question everything at all times. That's just how it goes. That's baseball. What a contract for Leonard. Grubauer, then Holpe in Vancouver. Again, uh, Markstrom went to Calgary. And one Caden Primo. One Caden Primo. Looking good at this point. Do we have any goalie goals or goalie points? I mean, points, I'm certain. No goalie goals. Points later for goalies. Markstrom with four. Uh, Ivory not in tonight's episode so far. Or tonight's episode, tonight's stream. Right now, the rookie race. It's Barrett, Hayton, Ryan Merkley, Joe Valeno. Of course, Lafreniere ended up in New York. Evan Barrett also up there. Not bad. There's no crying in roster. <laughs> uh, and then for the rookie goaltenders... I mean, Caden Primo, if he were to be the starter, which he's not, but... Olivier Rodrigue, Kevin Lankinen, the starter in Chicago. Because for some reason, they have no goddamn idea how to sign goaltenders. They just don't. They just don't. All right, let's sim the rest of this. I don't know if we're going to make any changes to this team. I mean, I'm pretty content with it. We'll sim up to the deadline, see what's going on. See what big time uh, trades have happened, if anything. The good thing is you don't even have to check, like, oh, have any trades happened. It just tells you if trades have happened. So, let's keep marching on. Oh, God. Sim to the deadline. Uh, yeah, we'll sim to February 1st first. February 1st first. See what happens from there. I love, I gotta admit, I love the love. I love the love my boy Deke Slayer is getting. A lot of times people are like, man, you jealous of other people's success? Fuck no. Especially not Deke Slayer's. I'm jealous of his looks, but not his success. I'm like a proud dad. Storming his way to partner. It's gonna happen. And I can't wait. Why'd you move Zach? Uh, Zach and Frankie, it's two days in a row I told you to just read the goddamn editing doc. I told you why. As the Dallas Stars have fired their head coach. Not surprising. You acquire Jack Hughes. You're in the basement. Your coach gets to go to bed, Dad. So we left Roddy and Clark at the top of this list. But there are computer-generated players. Elliot McGuire, Caden Chen, and Roy Shaw. Then also you have Dylan Genther, Cole Sillinger, Xavier Borgolt. Borgol, perhaps. I don't even know how to say his name properly, but it's fine. What are you going to do? Leon Gawanke, back from injury. Jack uses a curse. He might be. Knucklehead, what's going on? How are you? Good to see you. Oh, so 36-12-1. I don't really think we have to change anything. Let me actually pay attention to this Jets team really quickly. Because I often, when I'm like, oh, I'm going to test out the rosters 
I uh, is a Max Zimmer a draft prospect? No, he's he's already a prospect. He's with the Hurricanes. Because oftentimes, uh, to finish that point, when I test out the rosters, the host team I always kind of overlook. But I didn't want to run Millberry mode because the AI just destroys everything. But yeah, no, that third line's fine. Like Appleton's not amazing, but still. I am perfectly content with this team. Not that Brian Little is the ideal third liner. If we can find the second line center, Frankie, it's all good. I was just being obnoxiously defensive. Hmm. I think if we get a second liner, move Roslovich to the wing, get Brian Little there. Yeah, we need a second line center. We need a second line center. And defensively, we should be okay. How has Braswa done? Backup goaltender. Cody, I did see ends points, but I don't think he's the solution necessarily. But he's an amazing depth option to have alongside uh, alongside Appleton. Trevor Zegra. God damn. All right, I do not want Anthony Boteto or Victor Soderstrom or John Beecher. I'm just just kidding. I want John Beecher for sure, but it's not going to happen. Oh, uh, boy. I love how Buffalo is like, hey, does anybody want Oliver? I have several questions. I'm just, uh, I'm just gonna let that go and not question what Buffalo's doing. I'm just not gonna question why Buffalo signed all of those guys to ELCs. All defensemen. I'm not even gonna question it. Let's just move on. Oh, Pelletier, Holloway, not really what we're looking for. Carolina's trying to shop Suzuki and Drury. Alex Holtz as well. Good luck with that. Jonathan Taves. If I could get Jonathan Taves on half salary, that would be one hell of a deal. We might have to try this. We might have to try this. The man's from Winnipeg, after all. Hometown boy. Andrew Shaw is also there, but uh, he's not exactly who I want as a second-line center. Jonathan Taves is on the short list, but we'd have to get him on half salary. And I still need a backup goalie, but uh, actually, here. So you know what? Let's uh, let's take a look. Goaltenders? All right, they're not, they don't have any goaltenders. What am I thinking? Uh, Colorado? Nobody. Columbus? Riley Nash, I don't want as the second line center. I love Riley Nash, but Dallas shopping Jason Robertson. Don't agree with that. Ed Money shopping for Berg. Matt Benning was a holdout this year. He's done for the year. Charles Hudon, now in Florida, trying to shop him. Zdeno. I could save Zdeno from a hell, a life of hell in Los Angeles. It could be done. Jordan Wheel. It's, wow, Phil Tomasino's up to a 75. It's looking, unless I want a Jason Spezza. It's looking like Taves is the right guy. Pochar is the second line center. Fucking 4D chest right there. Dude, Ottawa's now trying to shop their prospects. Ottawa's officially in win now mode. It took two signings, but Ottawa is in win now mode. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. Taves or O'Reilly? St. Louis is shopping Ryan O'Reilly. Crash, I don't know why you said screw you, but let's be honest, I probably deserved it. What did I say, though? Why the hell? Why the hell are they shopping Ryan O'Reilly? <laughs> I mean, 
There's no reason to not get him. I mean, granted, we have the hometown boy in Taves versus O'Reilly. Are there any other options, or is it down to those two? Paul, <laughs> could bring back Paul Stashney. Oh, boy. And then Washington, Lars Eller has a ton of value. So it is down to either Ryan O'Reilly, St. Louis under 500 on the season, or Jonathan Taves with a very similar record. That might actually be an identical record. Oh, the uh, L.A. hellhole comment. Well, sorry. I mean, they're not good, though. But my last franchise mode, I made them good, so does that help? Chat, I'm going to leave this up to you. Pyro, by the way, if you're here, I might go back to viewer pick draft tonight to make the draft more interesting. I'm going to leave it up to you guys, though. Are we going for Jonathan Taves first or Ryan O'Reilly? It is going to be... There we go. Vote on that. Will it be Ryan O'Reilly? Or will it be Jonathan Toes? Jonathan Toes. If I can't get one, I go for the other. Pyro, how are you feeling about viewer picks tonight? Sound like a plan, dog? Sound like a plan? Point totals? I mean, I don't think that's going to influence people's decision, but we can still take a look. O'Reilly is winning this poll by double right now. Jonathan Taves. Oh, Packeroff dropping dropping the two. You love to see it. So I mean Taves right now, as Python steps in with a two month of his own. You love to see it. Python, Packeroff, appreciate you both. Thank you very much. Jonathan Taves, I mean, you know. 22 points. That's a lot of that's a lot of cheese. Whereas for Ryan O'Reilly, well, Ryan O'Reilly is winning the poll 21 to 9, so we are going to target Ryan O'Reilly first. Three years left at 7.5 million. Suck your taves for a McDonald's rib sandwich. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Well played indeed. So the question is who to give up, and the good thing is we have plenty of prospects to work with. Not so much picks. Because we went in for uh, Pulock and uh, Eric Chernock last night. So, I'm definitely not giving up Billy Heinola. I'll actually move back over here. There's not as much information cut off if I'm over here. Which is very nice. Alright, so. We have Heinola, Lundmark's 20 and a 70. Lundmark's not a bad one to... Uh, Give up. We don't want to move Brian Little. You got Chisholm. Logan Stanley could be worth... You know, we have prospects we can give up here. Like Chisholm and Logan Stanley. Give them up instead of uh, Lundmark. That's not a bad way to go. You got Dylan Rosovich. Gustafson. Someone like Nate Smith could be used too. What's O'Reilly's trade value? We can pull this off. We can definitely pull this off. So... I think I'd rather give up Logan Stanley than Chisholm. And you can't say the Blues wouldn't want Logan Stanley. I mean, uh, he's the perfect player to commit an illegal hit and then have his head coach complain to the refs that they're on the receiving end of too many bad calls. Congrats on the cup again, St. Louis, but let's be honest here. So definitely use Logan Stanley in the deal. Jan Mizak could be used, but there might be another forward I want to get rid of instead. I mean, Sox, tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong that it's not hilarious that a certain Craig Marube, of all people, complained to the referees about not getting calls when he had the career that he did. That'd be like Zach Ronaldo becoming a head coach and being like, you know, we're just not getting enough calls. Like, it's hilarious. It worked is the better thing, and the Blues won the cup because of it. But it's hilarious. The irony is fantastic. We're going to have to use Jan Mizak in this trade. But we have someone like Christian Veselainen, so it's fine. I'd be like Dan Carcillo complaining about concussions. Knucklehead and his Dan Carcillo hate. Name a more iconic duo. I'll wait. Oh, let's see. Dude, look at Ilya Mikheyev, man. What a guy. It has to be Mizak for forward prospects. It has to be. How close are we with Mizak and Stanley? 
We're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. I do have other defensive prospects to give up. I prefer to try and cash out on any value that Nate Smith has right now. We're still getting there. I'm going to try draft picks instead. Uh, what about a third rounder next year? Just a bit low. Oh, baby. So three Paras prospects and a couple of draft picks. We're going to pick up Ryan O'Reilly. Could have gone for the hometown boy and Jonathan Taves, but the chat has spoken. Do I try to get Ryan... We are going to go and add Declan Chisholm to this deal. And I'm going to try to be a real son of a bitch and get Ryan O'Reilly on reduced salary. Are not close to me now? Okay, so the value works, but they just don't want to do it because of the retention. Which is fine, because now we get to add Nate Smith to the deal. Okay, so they would accept it had it not been for the retention, which isn't surprising. Do I have anybody else here I'd prefer to give up? I could give up Dylan Sandberg here, too. Throw a third round pick back in. I don't really need to have O'Reilly you know, on retained salary. He's on a really good enough deal as it is. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Let's, uh, let's go back to what we had. Fourth rounder this year. Third rounder next year. And we will reduce the price until they accept to see if we can just get any sort of salary retention because they would have accepted it. Otherwise, if I'm not mistaken, that was the exact setup. Let's just slowly inch down that number until it goes through. If it will at all, which it might not. I can't get any retention on them, so be it. Which is looking likely, but what are we going to do? 20%. And again, Ryan O'Reilly on 7.5 mil is a really good contract. So I'm not complaining. Alright, well, let's just hold on to this then. Ryan O'Reilly. Well, that's what? You would have accepted that before. What the hell are you talking about? Fine, second round pick next year. There we go. Logan Stanley, Jan Mizak, and Nate Smith, along with a second round pick for Ryan O'Reilly. Let's do it. Welcome aboard, Ryan O'Reilly. Can you lead us to a Stanley Cup? That is the question. But what an addition. Warrior dropping the whole $1. You love to see it. You love, you love to see it. Uh, let me do this, and then we are good to go. So what we're going to do, who's the better center between Little and Roslovich? Alright, we're going to, uh, let's go best lines for the moment. And that right there is the game plan. And that is spectacular. So we're going to change a little to a two-way. We just have to switch the other two, and we are good to go. Our defense, Pionk, Pulak, Morrissey, Chernak. I'm good with that. Although, can we get better than a plus three? No, we can't. Let's just make that switch. Then have Morrissey, Pionk as the top pair. Looks good to me. We still need a backup goalie, though. I just need to flip uh, Little and Roslovich really quickly, and we'll be good to go. Apparently I'm over the salary cap, though. I don't think that's true. Otherwise, the trade wouldn't have gone through. But, I mean... I was going to say I've been wrong before, but that's never happened in my life. So, who's to say? Who is to say? Ah, oh, Brian Little. You get to go back to being a two... Oh, my sweet Christ. You get to go back to being a two-way. Thank you very much. And 
And Jack Ross, I bet you get to be a winger now. Congratulations. Oh, and then we get to see this team lose in the first round again. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Mike Milbury can lead a damn team to a cup, but here I am. Just hoping for the best. Oh, I'll go back over. I have no idea who we're going to get as a goalie. Someone pointed out in chat that Carey Price is on the, you know, the trade block, but it's not uh, not looking too good for me. Thought it makes a lot of money for a third liner. True. He is the perfect guy to get rid of around the uh, around the deadline. Still use two ways. I do. Because they're good for chemistry on the penalty kill, dog. Alright, perfect. And then again, just make that quick little flip right there. And we are looking okay. So let's see, the scratches right now. Comrie, Pullman, Appleton. Perfect. So N got sent down, which is a shame, but... Laurent Braswat. Laurent Bratswat. See money? I appreciate that. We don't have much money to work with here, so I don't see who we're actually going to be able to pick up as a goalie. I'd prefer to have it be someone who's on the block because of the reduced value. Well, there's an option. Deke Slayer, do I have your blessing <laughs> to pick off Auntie Ranta? Ooh, Yarrow. Hold on a second. Never mind, Deke. Never mind. I think we're going for your Slavalok instead. He's he's inexpensive, and I'm very happy about it. How good is Thomas Grice at ah, AHL numbers? He's way too good for the AHL though. Again, Carolina with Askarov, like you need him. I think we're going to be going after one your Slavalok. Never mind. Never mind. Now, Yunus, you know, Corpusalo is a little bit more of a risk. He's a little bit more of a risk. It's the extra year on the deal. But he's also an option. Malcolm Subban, we're not going to need. Alex Stalock, no. Carey Price is there. <laughs> but no thank you. I think we have our answer. I think we have our answer. Nobody there. Is Fevin Lining good or something? Weird how they want to deal with Corpus Hall. I agree that it's weird. Maybe because they're paying Merzlikens what they're paying him. Key. Um, KP. Hockey. Easy for me to say. That was, that was just weird. St. Louis is also shopping a goaltender. Go figure. Both have been struggling. St. Louis undergoing a fire sale. I'm going to let them wallow in that misery for now. Uh, Anderson and Mike Smith. Boy, that really didn't work out for Vancouver, did it? I mean, they do have Holpe, but yikes. All right. It comes down to Ranta or Yaroslav Halak. And I'm going to go for Halak. Cheaper. One-year deal going to have to be Yaroslav Halak, as opposed to even Corpusala. That extra of Corpusala's deal hurts. But, that raises the question of how to get this deal done without being over the cap. Zerkachev, that was awful. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Let's see, who do we have? I don't really want to give up Appleton. He's on a really good deal for the next two years. I We need to figure out what we're doing here cap-wise. Brian Little's definitely going to have to be traded. The good thing is Matthew Perot's deal is up. Chris Chandrews, take it easy. We love you. We'll catch you later. Get some sleep. Wake up. Catch the 4 o'clock news. It's going to be a time. We love you, buddy. Wow, we have some expiring contracts coming up, and it's a lot of bottom six dudes. Which is 
is good. A lot of money coming off the books. If I throw in Carl Dahlstrom, I would still be over the cap. I don't think I'm going to be able to get them to take Matthew Perot. It's FIFA 20 career mode still glitchy and sucky. As far as I know it is, which is why I don't play it. Because I was playing it in, what, November or December? With the, uh, essentially the Japanese Nation United. And then we hit a certain point where if I literally tried to pay my star players, I'd get fired immediately. So. <laughs> yeah, the mode's not great. On PC, it's a little bit better, but that's because people mod it, so it actually works. Alright, you know what? Ryan O'Reilly's our big pickup. We don't have the money to afford to get anybody. That feels like years ago, doesn't it? It's about six months ago. Grubauer's choking away a playoff berth in my AF franchise. I mean, that, that's that's what you get for trusting Grubauer, dog. Alright, so our move is done. We acquired Ryan O'Reilly. Let's see if that prevents us from choking in the first round. Time will tell. Kaniac, what's going on, buddy? Appreciate that host, by the way. Oh, boy. Hello. That is such a steal for Vegas, it's not even funny. Jesus. I mean, J-Mac, if you do, just don't start one with a lower-ranked team. Alec Martinez, Chandler Stevenson, and a third for Dylan Holloway and two-thirds. Holloway is a medium top six at this point, I believe. He might even be a medium... He might even be a, No, he must be a medium six. If not, he's a medium nine. Even then, that's still a steal. So Christian Veselainen goes down to injury. That's rough. Oh, God. The kid from Shrek was real. Went up to Ryan. Do the roar. I love you. Holy shit. I don't know. What is Vegas? Vegas, what are you doing? Cam Fowler, Eric Goodbudskin, a fourth and a fifth for Paul Stashney and two second rounders. Cam Fowler to the Vegas Golden Knights. But most importantly, most, most importantly, most importantly, you know who else goes to Vegas? You know who else goes to Vegas? Gufferson. Fucking Gufferson. And here's Grub Butskin. Who's your daddy, Whoops. Montreal? Well, I didn't mean to hit that one, but it's good to have that clip on standby at all times. What else are we going to have here? Let's see what else we got. We just lost to Dallas. Feels bad. The Montreal Canadiens have acquired Jaden Schwartz and a third for Jesse Elanen, a prospect named Sullivan, and a first round pick. Son of a bitch. These deals are insane. Jaden Schwartz to Montreal for a first, Elan and more. Devils, what's happening? God damn. We've lost four in a row. What's going on here, boys? I take that IRO. I mean, if Montreal's in contention, it's worth it. Schwartz would help them a lot. All right, we're beyond the deadline, so that was probably the big deal. Ryan O'Reilly and Jaden Schwartz off of the Blues as they are in fire sale mode at the second year deadline. We're going to win 50 games for the second year in a row unless we are just magically horrific. Unlucky charms. Check if your lines are good. I did. I mean, the AHL might be a bit rough, but I had David back. Let's go for two first. So is this like a do-whatever-it-takes-to-bring-Canada-another-cup franchise? <laughs> Apparently. I mean, if it had to be a Canadian team, too, it might as well be Winnipeg. Schwartz going to play center. If I were to get a Blue Jackets jersey, who am I putting on it? Like a current Blue Jackets jersey? Morse, what's going on, buddy? Like, are we talking a current Blue Jackets jersey? Current Adidas. Ooh. Did you get a blank? Or you're looking like on Cool Hockey, I'm guessing. I mean, Elvis is a really good shout. Cool Hockey? I figured. I just don't like paying full price for jerseys. 
Okay, if I were to get a Blue Jackets jersey, I would go for either Merzlikens, Cam Atkinson, because he's the Catkinson, or number 24, Nathan Gerby. <laughs> but that's just me. 30%. Ooh. I have to look into that then. Oh, God. Or you could go for Matto, Matto, Matto. <laughs> but I'd probably go for Nathan Gerby for the memes. Because I fucking love Nathan Gerby. So with that, the regular season has come to a close. Well, let's take a look around the league again, shall we? Shall we? Deke, do you have a code on cool hockey? And if you do, then how'd you get one and I need one? Because what the fuck? I mean, goddamn, I'm disrespected. Elvis is my front runner, then the Katkinson. Good call. Oh it's, oh, it's the Father's Day sale. Okay, I heard about that. Let's take a look around the league here, shall we? So for the second year in a row, your Winnipeg Jets. Shout out to one Jesse Pollock. Your Winnipeg Jets, the best team in the West. 52 win season. For the second year in a row, Chicago makes it as well. Gray Fox are on medium scoring. Minnesota makes it, as does the defending Stanley Cup champion Colorado Avalanche. St. Louis wasn't as far back as you'd think for a team that's been selling. Dallas with Jack Hughes also misses out. And then there's Nashville. McLean, you don't get Rick Nash on a current Blue Jackets jersey. That's a jersey foul, dog. Oh, and then Nashville, of course, a rough season for them. Cody, I'm going to fucking strangle you. Check something you're going to check anyway, Toogie. I will. Chill. Bring it down a couple of notches. Bring it down. I am well aware that Chicago's goaltending sucked, and they still made the playoffs. Well aware. Pacific Division. The Vancouver Canucks with Braden Holpe. Take it. Cody likes to be annoying. A couple of people in chat like to be annoying, and I love them anyway, but goddamn. Bring it down. Bring it down a couple of levels. San Jose, the Arizona Coyotes, and the Calgary Flames make it. Anaheim just missed out despite getting rid of Cam Fowler and good Budskin. A uh, horrible season for Edmonton. A horrible season for Edmonton. Horrible season for Vegas, and then you had the LA Kings, who finished dead last. 24 wins for them. And the Atlantic, your Boston Bruins. The Toronto Maple Leafs, Montreal, and Ottawa makes the playoffs. From last to best. You love, you love to see it. Tampa misses. Disaster. Huge improvements for Detroit and Buffalo, and a brutal season for the Florida Panthers. F's in chat for Deej. And in the Metro, you have the Philadelphia Flyers, President's Trophy winners for the second year in a row. Washington, Columbus, and Carolina. Pittsburgh misses out, despite being tied on points for Carolina. The Islanders, Rangers, both a bit back. And the New Jersey sucked. Sucked. So your top five, Philly, Washington, Winnipeg, Chicago, and Boston. Bottom five, LA, New Jersey, Nashville, Dallas, and Vegas. Take a look here. Goals for average. Bottom five offenses were New Jersey, Nashville, Anaheim, LA, and St. Louis. I wonder why for St. Louis. The most goals for Washington, Winnipeg, Toronto, Boston, Philly. The worst goals against average, New Jersey, the only team over a four. You have LA, Dallas, Vegas, and Buffalo. And then the best, you know, top five, Philly, Arizona, Washington, Winnipeg, and Anaheim, who didn't even make the playoffs. So uh, no help at all. For John Gibson. No help at all. For one John Gibson. Poor bastard. Worst power play is Columbus, Minnesota, Vegas, Vancouver. So four of the five teams in the bottom five for power play made the playoffs. Power plays are overrated. You heard it here first. Top five. Ooh, best power play in the league. Your Winnipeg Jets. Washington, Boston, Pittsburgh, and Chicago. Pittsburgh and Edmonton didn't make it. That's brutal. Let's see, best penalty kill, Ottawa, New York, Arizona, St. Louis, and Boston. So two of the top five power plays didn't even make the postseason. Worst PKs, New Jersey, Pittsburgh, Vegas, Florida, and Vancouver, who made the playoffs. Because why not? Around the league, we'll kick things off. 
weekend hobby. Appreciate the follow. Start off with Winnipeg here. I mean, a phenomenal season for our top line with Wheeler, Connor, and Shifley. All at least 93 points. Blake Wheeler scored 48 goddamn goals. Patrick Line nearly hit 40-40. Ellers was solid. Ryan O'Reilly finished the season with 65 points. He had 25 points in 33 games as a member of the Jets. Very, very good. Ilya Mikheyev had a phenomenal season. Two million bucks for 53 points. Brian Little, not bad, but again, going to probably have to get rid of him. Rostovich was solid. And then the fourth line, Lowry was pretty good. Perot, and that's a lot of money coming off the books. Thank God for that. Mason Appleton didn't really deserve to get scratched, but it is what it is. Then defense, Morrissey and Pionk, both over 40 points. Ryan Pulock was solid as well. Chernock, Niku, not too bad. And then goaltending-wise, Brassois picked it up back half of the season. We just have to hope he doesn't go down. We're solely relying upon Connor Hellebuck. Let's take a look around the league, then we can take a look at some individual teams. Alex Ovechkin dominates the league. He also had Ranton and McKinnon, Pasternak, Wheeler, Kuznetsov, Connor Shifley, and Brady Kachuk. Towards the top, goal scoring king, of course, Alex Ovechkin. Blake Wheeler was actually second. And Marshawn, Ranton, and McKinnon, Kachuk, Tavares, Turcott, and Kane. The assist leader, Kuznetsov and Connor. Probably give it to Kuzi. He had one less games played. Or game played. Alex Nylander, Pasternak, John Carlson was up there. That's insane. Uh, here, we'll switch it over to just forwards for the moment. But hey, it is what it is. Actually, we'll go to the fence at this point. So the point leader, John Carlson, another great season. Krug, Tyson Berry. What a difference maker he is for Ottawa. You have, uh, you know, I'm going to go back over here for the moment because you have the one and the only. The only. I don't remember what the And here's is. Oliver Lawson Tossum. I think that's pretty good. Shout out to Oliver Lawson Tossum. It's been a while since we played that one. Yeah, Carlson, you got Burns, Yandel. Truba and Morgan Riley. Imagine if it was Mike. Imagine if it was Mike. Goal scoring king was Tori Krug. Carlson Burns. Wierenski and Schatz were up there as well. Oh yeah, Deke. He called him Oliver Lawson Tossum. Least favorite NHL player. I don't know at this point. All my least favorites have thankfully retired. So I don't know at this point. Goalie wise, Kata Hat. You ready for the you ready for this overall reveal? You ready for this overall reveal? But no, feel free to tell me how it's unfair that I have him rated at what I have him rated at. Feel free. Feel free. Dude, you don't know what you're talking about. God damn, Hellebuck was up there. Ilya Samsonov up to an 83, which is a good rating for a goalie, by the way. People, my favorite thing, my favorite thing, I'll say this, let me have this rant for a minute. People complain about there being too many highly rated players with the A's roster. So then I lower the average rating for what makes a good player, and now all of a sudden it's, no, your players are too low rated. <laughs> You can't win. You can't win, I tell you. My fucking mute button's broken and I hate it. Uh, let's see. The shutout king. Hellebuck and Gibson. How Gibson was that good on a trash team, I don't even know. And then save percentage. So Vancouver traded Mike Smith to Chicago. That's how they made the playoffs. It wasn't even defined as a big enough trade to get an alert, but it helped lead Chicago to the playoffs. So, uh, case in point. He was brutal in Utica, and then went to Chicago, went 15-5-1, and, and helped get the Blackhawks into the playoffs. Corpusalo was fantastic. Ronta was fantastic. Joey Decord was fantastic for Ottawa. Then you had uh, the monster, of course, who ended up being signed. Carter Hart's likely to win the Vesna. 
Caden Primo was really good. I am fighting off this sneeze, and it is not working too well. Ah! Whew. God damn it. Thank you, Cody. Appreciate it. Adelia Samsonov up there. Darcy Kemper. Braden Holpe. Yara Halak. John Gibson. Where's Elvis? He's uh, below Martin Jones. Bob Vassy was down there. There's Elvis. Only had a 908. Oh, and then for the rookie race. Barrett Hayton is going to win the caller over Joe Valeno, although Ryan Merkley might win it. There is a chance that Ryan Merkley could win it. But odds are, Barrett Hayton has just won the Calder. And to quickly go back to goalie uh, points and goalie goals here before somebody asks, because I forgot to look this time. No goalie goals. The leader in points, though, Morazic and Markstrom with five each. Least favorite NHL team. Well, if my favorite team is that, I can't imagine who my least favorite team is. <laughs> uh, Caden Primo and Joey Decord each had really good seasons, but likely it's going to go to uh, Hayton or Merkley, all things considered. Ah. Oh, God. Elvis looks like a rescue from Resident Evil. That's a hilarious... Don't you call him an Albert. That's Wesker's first name, right? Was it Albert? I think so. The Leafs, why would I hate the why would I hate a team that can't beat my team in the playoffs? Until they probably beat them this year. The Bruins practice today. I'm still not getting hyped about hockey potentially coming back until it's actually back. And I am still of the opinion I don't like the idea of watching live sports, a spectator sport, when there's no spectators. I just don't like it. So maybe I'll change my tune about time the Bruins make it back to a cup final, but I can't wait to hear, he scores! You might hear a couple of yeah from the players or a couple of woos, but like, come on. Stuffed animals and pumping crowd noise. You know, fair enough. Gym class, what's going on? We're doing well. D, I mean, that might work. That might work. That might work. What if there were blow-up dolls in the crowd? The irony, if Boston plays Toronto in Toronto and the Leafs have blow-up dolls in the crowd as the blow-up dolls get to watch the Bruins pump the Leafs. There's probably some irony on that. Anyway. Anyway. The lovely Calgary Flames square off against this bagel. We yet again finish as the top team in the Western Conference, but now the question is, will we choke in the playoffs again? We have acquired Ryan O'Reilly. He's on the second line with Nick Ellers and Patrick Laine. I am excited for this team. Excited to see how this may go. Of course, we you know, added Pulak and Chernak in the offseason. This team's looking good. But will we choke? The answer's probably yes. And again, I'm going to handle this in the same way that I handled Season 1. We'll probably only jump into the sim for elimination games. Handle this Deke Slayer style. But uh, let's see what Calgary looks like heading into this matchup. Let's see what the Flames look like. Again, the beginning of every season, we take a look at all the line combinations. So it's Kachuk, Monahan, Goodrow, Ryan Lindholm, Furland, Nieto, Backlund, Lucic, Mangiapane, Jankowski, Dubé. Lucic still has two more years left. Defense, Giordano, Hannafin, Gustafson, Anderson, Martinez, and the Sheelington. With goaltenders, Markstrom, and big save, Dave. Scratches of Valamaki, Stevenson, and Sam Bennett. Yes, indeed, Vancouver traded Furlan back to the Flames. <laughs> that happened in season one, the offseason there. All right, let's do this. Game one against Calgary. We'll advance day. And we won a playoff game. It happened. It happens. Yes, ma'am. We won a goddamn playoff game. No sweep this year. 
Vancouver, by the way, is playing Colorado. You have San Jose and Arizona. Chicago plays Minnesota. Poor Minnesota. In the east, it's Boston, Ottawa, Philly, Carolina, Toronto, Montreal, Washington, and CBJ. So, game two coming up. Coming at you. And we lose 5-3. to three. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. So, Vancouver's up 2-0. San Jose is up 2-0. 1-1 split in the other series. You have Boston and Washington up 2-0. And then the other two series are at a 1-1 split. Game three. AHL regular season comes to a close. We win four to nothing. Again, the one thing I wish you could do is just check the fucking box score after a game happens like you can in Madden. Baseball. Basketball. It's only the two games made in that building in EA uh, Vancouver. EA Burnaby. Uh, you can't do it. It's very disappointing. But a big win for us there. Take a look at the other series going on. So Vancouver up two to one, San Jose up two to one, Chicago up two to one, Boston and Washington both up three to nothing. Poor Ottawa, Montreal and Carolina up two to one. Game four is a loss, six to one final. Jesus Christ! So we're at a two-two split. You have Vancouver, Colorado at two-two, San Jose. Every series in the West is at a two-two. Boston sweeps Ottawa, so Ottawa makes it back, and then they get swept. You have a 2-2 split in two of the series, and then you have Washington up 3-1 to one on the Jackets. Which team has the cockiest fan base? Basically, you're asking which team has the most obnoxious fan base on Twitter and Reddit. That's pretty much what you're asking for. Pittsburgh's probably up there, but you can't really blame them because even like when Crosby or Malkin goes down to injury, they have like New England Patriots style where it's like, who the fuck's this guy? I don't know, but he just put up 45 points. I wouldn't define Toronto's fan base as cocky. I don't think that's the right word for it. Every fan base has toxic people. Exactly. But the question is basically which fan base has, in your opinion, the, the most toxic people. <laughs> Uh, game five. Big game here. We lose four to three. We're facing elimination against Calgary. You have Colorado now up three to two on Vancouver. Arizona comes back to go up three to two. And Chicago's up three to two. Toronto up three to two on Montreal. Carolina up three to two on Philly. And Washington advances to the second round after beating the Columbus Blue Jackets in five. Fair enough. So, with that, it's an elimination game. Can we stay alive? Is the question. God, don't choke again, please. Like, is the addition of Ryan O'Reilly really not enough? First period. So, I, uh, I talked about this yesterday. I was, uh, was going to do an actual franchise mode with the Jets on YouTube. But, uh, but I, I decided on some other series that I feel like are going to be more fun and entertaining. No disrespect to Winnipeg, but I already had the thumbnail done, so I wanted to use Winnipeg for a bit. I don't know if I can handle another series of watching a team shit the bed like this. Furlan, Jankowski, and two goals for Kachuk. Hellebuck has been pulled. Chernock gets the long goal for us. Second period. Ryan O'Reilly on the PP. Matthew Kachuk again. Third period. Game six down by three goals. Fair enough, Donna. It's not looking too good. For the second year in a row, the Winnipeg Jets crash and burn out of the first round of the playoffs after being the best team in the West. The hat trick for one Matthew Kachuk. You hate to see it. Oh, boy. Vancouver and Colorado go to Game 7. Arizona's up 3-2 on San Jose, as we talked about. I actually just have to sim this here. 
Yeah, Arizona's up 3-2. Chicago's up 3-2. Toronto up 3-2. And Philly, Carolina going to Game 7. It's certainly not Patrick Laine's fault that, uh, that we lost best jerseys in the NHL. Kachina, Vegas. Maybe the Blues throwback, too. Those are the first three that really came to mind. Uh, Kyle Connor. You had 90 points in the regular season, Doug. Shifley had five points. Blake Wheeler had five points. So Kyle Connor and Nick Ellers just disappeared. O'Reilly wasn't good defensively. Line was okay, too. Uh, Ilya Mikheyev sucked. Maybe lay off the soup. Brian Little wasn't that good. Rosovich with that third line got fucking buried. That third line got buried. Connor and Ellers disappointed. Pionk wasn't good defensively. Surprising, I know. Josh Morrissey shit the bed. Pulock didn't put up any points. Chernock was actually our best defenseman. And then the Brendan Dillon Sammy Niku pairing got shit on. And uh, Connor Hellebuck shit the bed. All right. Well, this team just pretty much as a collective unit absolutely shit the bed. It's good to know. Let's see who's moving on. Vancouver survives and knocks out the defending Stanley Cup champion Avalanche. San Jose, Arizona, Chicago, and Minnesota both going to Game 7s. Of course, Boston already moving on. Toronto and Montreal go to Game 7. Carolina knocks out the defending President Trophy winning uh, Philadelphia Flyers. Two years in a row, they've fallen short. And of course, Washington is already moving on. Let's see what happens here. So it is confirmed. Second round, Minnesota knocks out Chicago. Arizona knocks out San Jose. So the Wild play the Flames. The Canucks play the Coyotes. And in the East, it is Washington and Carolina. Boston will play Toronto, who survived the scare from the Montreal Canadiens. It is inevitable. It is inevitable. <laughs> but this time, it's in the second round. Game 1's to Minnesota, Arizona, Carolina, and Toronto. Game 2. 2-0 two leads for both Minnesota and Arizona. A 2-0 lead for Carolina, but Boston win game, wins Game 2, so not that bad. Let's see what happens here. Game 3. 2-1 leads now for Minnesota and Arizona. And a 2-1 lead now for Boston and Carolina. Ah, oh, Jack, what's happening? Let's see what happens here. Game four. Toronto wins. So 2-2 two -two split in both Eastern series. 2-2 two -two split in every single series in the second round. As Dark Void drops that lovely 19-month gosh darn dang resub. You love to see it. Void, how are the knees? They better be cleansed. See what happens here. Boston up 3-2. Washington up 3-2. Calgary and Arizona up 3-2. Who's punching their ticket to the Western Conference Final? Calgary advances. They knock out Minnesota. Vancouver forces Game 7 against Arizona. And both Eastern Conference matchups are going to Game 7. Because of course they are. How I wish I could switch teams and view the sim of those particular games, but we're not allowed to have fun here. <sighs> here we go. In the West, it is Calgary and Arizona. Arizona knocks out Vancouver. Boston and Washington in the Eastern Conference Final as Washington knocks out Carolina and Boston beats Toronto again. As if it was ever in doubt. So the final four are Washington, Boston, Arizona, and Calgary. Again, Washington losing in the Stanley Cup final last year to Colorado. So the rosters are realistic, right? There's the proof. Game one to Calgary and Boston. 4 nothing and one nothing. the score lines. Game two. Calgary and Boston. Both teams up two to nothing. Well, we have the Aginla Bowl in the final. 
find out here. Calgary up 3-0. Washington wins game three. Calgary Flames, we lost them in the first round. They are one win away from making a Stanley Cup final appearance. The Calgary Flames are going to the Stanley Cup final. Washington ties up their series against Boston. Calgary, what a road to the final for them. Going through the number one seed in the Winnipeg Jets. Going through the Minnesota Wild. And now going through the Arizona Coyotes. Will they play Washington? Or will they play Boston? That is the question. In the playoffs of Season 2. Here we go. Boston takes Game 5. They're up 3-2. 7-4 to two, seven to four final score. The Bruins are one win away without Captain Zdeno Chara from making it back to a cup final. Of course, Chara signed in Los Angeles. Game seven on the horizon. Uh, that's what I'm saying, Ivory. Me too. That would be nice too. You used to be able to do that in all the old games. Will it be Washington or will it be Boston that plays the Calgary Flames in the Stanley Cup final? The answer, the Boston Bruins. 5-1 victory in Game 7. The Aginla Bowl is on. Calgary and Boston. The Andrew Ference Bowl. Call it what you will. Canucks fans having a real bad time. Again, the Flames line up like this. Kachuk, Monahan, Goodrow, Ryan Lindholm, Ferland, Lucic, Backlund, Mangiapane, Jankowski, Dubé, and Stevenson. The defense is Giordano Anderson, Gustafson Hannafin, Martinez, and Sheelington. Goaltender, Jacob Markstrom. And a big save, Dave. An injury to Matt Nieto, Yusuf Valamaki, and Sam Bennett as healthy scratches. It is also a Lucic Bowl. Fair enough. The Bruins line up like this. Marshawn, Bergeron, Pasternak, DeBrus, Krejci, Kasha, Bjork, Coyle, Ritchie, Paul, Corrali, and Wagner. The defense is Krug, McAvoy, Grizzly, Carlo, Kalikov, and John Moore. Goaltenders, Rask, and Halak. No injuries, healthy scratches. Mark Barberio, Pyrland Holm, and Connor Clifton. Davos, your big save, Dave, in my heart. Don't worry. Number one in my heart. Game one goes to Calgary. Two to one scoreline. Game two goes to Calgary. Three to two scoreline. Game three goes to Calgary, four to two. Game four, the Calgary Flames sweep the Boston Bruins to win the Stanley Cup. What a fucking run from the Calgary Flames. Holy shit. They beat us in six, Minnesota in six, and then won eight straight games against Arizona and Boston to win the Stanley Cup and bring a cup back to Canada for the first time in nearly 30 years. 28 years later, a Canadian team finally wins something. Damn. The Calgary Flames, I wouldn't be so salty if they didn't beat me en route to the Cup, let alone also beat Boston. Oh, boy. And the Colorado Eagles take home the Calder Cup. Damn. So the awards, Colorado wins it in Season 1, Calgary in Season 2, Philly, of course, back-to-back -back President's Trophies. That meant absolutely nothing. Wish you could see the chem for other teams. I completely agree. Um, individual awards, Alex Ovechkin won the Art Ross. Gino won it last year. He also won the Hart. The Norris to John Carlson. The Lady Bing the Kuznetsov. The Calder. 2-1 Barrett Hayton of the Arizona Coyotes. Capo Caco won it in Season 1. Con Smythe to Matthew Kachuk. The Vesna. He was robbed last year. Wasn't robbed this year. It's Kata Hat. He also won the Jennings for the second year in a row. Joachim Ryan won the Masterton. Jack Adams... That's a realistic Jack Adams winner. Is someone, a team he didn't expect to be good. Ottawa went from the basement to the playoffs, even if they lost in the first round. 
Sasha Barkov wins the Selkie, Ovi the Ted Lindsay, and the Rocket Richard. All text, you came to the right place. Tanner Lashinsky scored the most points in the AHL. Vitaly Kravtsov was MVP. Most goals to Lashinsky. Grigory Denisenko was top rookie. Brennan Manel, top defenseman. Capo Kakunin, top goaltender. And the MVP of the playoffs, former Sen, it's Shane Bowers. Let's take a look at the point totals here for the Flames in the playoffs. That menu lag was impressive. 25 points in 20 games for Matthew Kachuk. But I can't help but feel as though Markstrom got robbed with that 931 save percentage. It was on your Vegas jersey. This is uh, this is the real deal, dog. The James Neal right here. I also have a uh, home jersey that is uh, Wild Bill. Because I needed both versions of the uh, Vegas jersey, let's be honest. Pyro, are you here? Because while we don't have the most amount of draft picks, thank you, Pyro. If you want a chance to make a selection in this draft, in chat right now, eat pant. All one word, no spaces, no capitalization. Eat pant. Pretty simple. You want a chance to make a pick in the upcoming draft, eat pant in chat. Again, the rules of this, you get no timeout, so be prepared to search for what you want to search for. We do have low latency mode on. Remember, no timeouts. If you want to look at a certain player's attributes, you got to tell me fast. If you want to sort by uh, potential or whatever the hell, you got to be quick. You got to be quick. You got three minutes to work with once your name is drawn. So keep that in mind. Here comes the lottery results. Number one pick goes to the Florida Panthers. Detroit moves up from 11 to 2 after getting screwed last year, and then LA falls down to 3. Tampa moves up, though, which is incredible. So, again, if you want me to search for a certain player type, a certain name, whatever, I can do that. Just be ready. And if time expires, time expires, and the pick is whatever the hell the AI selects. But all in all, a huge win for the Florida Panthers. In this upcoming draft, retired players. Let's see what we got here. Patty Marlowe retires as a member of the Canucks. Derek Wah. This is Derek Roy. Franz Nielsen retires. Matt Bolesky, Cody McLeod, Lance Belma, Ryan White. Former Portland Pirate Chris Connor. You love to see it. And then for the defense, Sedano Char, Dan Hamhouse, Trevor Daly. Derek Anglin and Matt Hunwick. And former, what, fourth overall pick? Third overall. Fuck's sake, Cam Barker. Uh, Zach, very soon. Very, very soon. Ryan Miller, Corey Schneider, and Curtis McElhaney. All retire as well. Corey Schneider. Plummeted. Are the teams announced yet? Nope, but you'll find out very soon. We have new staff members. Dan Hamhuse becomes a coach. Franz Nielsen becomes a scout. Fair enough. Draft interviews we're going to pass. Can I check on Jack Hughes' stats? Ah, uh, Snipe, let's just wait until we go through the Lions at the start of Season 3. Remind me when we get to Dallas to look at his stats and not just be like, oh, okay, he's on this line. One more call. Eat pant in chat if you want a chance to make a pick in this draft. All one word. It's eat pant. Now, I am likely to try and trade Brian Little here as we start this off. So, Pyro, no need to draw a name just yet. I'll give you the word on that. But I know we're not going to be making a huge trade up, even though Florida wants to move that pick. Actually, you know, I'm probably just going to use the trade finder here and then I'll alter, alter it. So. But in terms of goaltenders, I'm a little bit worried about Hellebuck. But he's still on a really good deal, so we're not going to get rid of him. Uh, Braswa kind of redeemed himself in the playoffs, so I'll probably try to hold on to him. Defensively, I'm not against trying to shop Brendan Dillon. He's a bit too expensive for a third pairing defenseman, which was where we were using him. So I'm thinking we're going to try to shop Brendan Dillon, who we signed last year. So we can get a first round pick out of it from Arizona. 
Not glad I didn't, but that's hilarious, and I guarantee some people could think that'd be true. I think that first round pick, 28th overall from Arizona, is a good place to start. Because we might be able to get someone who's better than any of the prospects uh, that were being offered here. Alright. Well, Deke, I hate to do this, but we're going to be robbing the Coyotes of a first round pick here. And I'm going to safety net this, because let's be honest, teams love to try and... Uh, Love to try and scurry over. Take a chance on a first next year? Nah, I'm not going to do that. We'll be fine. This is going to be just fine. Although, apparently, they offered me proper value. And apparently, uh... Was it a fourth next year? No, nah, it was just the difference there. Brandon Dillon, have fun in Arizona. There was a first from next year that was better. I don't care. Look at my face. My beautiful, beautiful face. Does it look like I have a single fuck to give about, well, the first next year could have been better. I don't care. <laughs> oh, defense. So we should be good from there. We still really need to shop uh, Brian Little, though. We need to. Uh, Ilya Mikheyev, I don't know if we're going to be re-signing him. But yeah, Brian Little has to go because of the addition of Ryan O'Reilly. Please tell me somebody's interested. Tenth overall from Buffalo. That, uh, that works for me. Buffalo willing to give up the tenth overall pick. New York's willing to give up the ninth. Looks like we're getting the ninth overall pick from the New York Rangers. In exchange for Brian Little. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Brian Little is apparently worth the ninth overall pick. Now, I don't have time to even try to trade up with Florida. It would be hilarious to do so, but they're going to make this pick any second now. And, of course, you can't call a timeout, so we'll let them make that pick. And they take Aturati. High elite, 80 overall. No real surprise there. Do I have anybody else I have to get rid of? No big trade-ups, he said. At least not an intentional one. At least not an intentional one. Alright, from there I think we're fine because we got a lot of money coming off the books. Should have taken the first next year from Carolina. You should kiss my ass to bring it. How about that? I... You should have done this. Why? Convince me. Convince me. I want to be convinced to bring it. Why? Sell me on that idea as if I don't know how to build a team. I'm waiting. I have all night. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I got all night. I'll sit through all seven rounds of this draft. Just watch me. I'm waiting. Jameson Reese and a potential lottery pick. Jameson reason a potential lottery pick over this draft that has a high amount of computer, a high amount of created players along with computer generated players, which means you're guaranteed to get somebody who's half decent in the middle rounds of this draft because they were pushed down from the top of the draft due to the created players. You want to try again to break it? You want to try again? I'm here for it. Rebuild, thank you. I love you. Very much appreciated. Still waiting. I can be the biggest douchebag on the planet. It's not that hard for me to do it. Okay. I think we've solved this, haven't we? Uh, trade for the fourth? I mean, we could. I'm not trying again. You shouldn't have tried in the first place because you were wrong. <laughs> you shouldn't have tried in the first place. I will show you why. Carolina has champion status. And in case you haven't noticed, even teams that have a decent status, like Dallas, can be one of the worst teams in the league. So, no, it was a better idea to get the ninth overall pick. Now, we could trade up to get the fourth overall pick, 
But I gotta be honest, it makes more sense to just keep the picks that we have because of the created players in the draft. I mean, the value isn't likely to be there. I mean, unless we were to trade like Christian Veselainen, which is like, eh, that's not really a risk I'm willing to do when we have uh, user picks or viewer picks. It's just too big of a risk to give up anybody to try and trade up because then if someone sabotages the pick, then we missed out. So I do have to try and protect myself from pick sabotaging. That said, ninth overall pick is ours. Pyro, draw a name. Who's it going to be as Brant Clark goes to Detroit? Second overall. AJ, you ready? Your time is now. John Cena, baby. Uh, Montreal, let's just eat pant one word in chat. AJ's here. Says sort by potential. Your time starts now. We will go back through the draft and the rest of the first round in a minute. So, AJ, this is what you're dealing with. I researched this draft. I'm glad you did. Man's got this. I mean, he has two decent options at the very top, at least. And a goalie named uh, Dwight Downey, who's six foot five. Jesus Christ. Mika Nidimaki, straight A's. Only one A minus, and that's in the physical category. Backstrom comparison. It's quite good. Ah, uh, I mean, not You know, in life, a lot of things are rigged. In life, a lot of things are rigged. So, I mean, could could a pick be bought? Probably. Probably, yeah. Am I sick? Nah. I think I. Uh, just my nose is acting up. I feel fine. Nidimaki final pick. Fair enough. Mika Nidimaki from the Lati Pelicans. He's going to be our pick at ninth overall. Thank you very much, Brian Little. As he is an 81 overall medium elite. And Warrior dropping that gifted sub. This over bits. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. Warrior, congratulations. You may have just bought yourself a pick. Oh, God. Let's just recap the first round here, though, shall we? So it goes Roddy, Clark, Shaw, who was computer-generated. Immediate uh, top six defenseman. Dark Void dropping some bits as well. Here's some bits plus my bits for yesterday from No Pick for Warrior. I mean, that may equal out. And now Warrior dropping another gifted sub. You'd love to see it. Computer-generated Pen Chen. Computer-generated McGuire. Xavier Borgo. Goes to Dallas. Dylan Genther. To Vegas and Tarvine also on the move. It's Roddy, not Rod. My minister. How many times have I said his name correctly? But the one time I say it wrong because there's a lot going on, you're like, no, I feel the need to point this out. You're an asshole! Still love you, though. I still love you. Warrior just gifting subs left and right. Oh, God. Warrior gift. Okay, Warrior! Fuck's sake. Okay, you did it. Next pick is Warriors. Get ready. <laughs> Next pick is yours. I can be bought. Why not? Alright, Warrior. You're on the board. Them voids next. Apparently. 28th overall. Warriors on the board first. Knucklehead, it took you a minute. I'm sorry. Warriors on the board. Then I gotta choose between Knucklehead and Void. And I'm not sure which one it's gonna be. Ruin the sanctity of the raffle. Fuck it. Why not? Warrior, who's it gonna be? I'm just here fucking around. <laughs> oh, God. And Warrior, you know the deal. You hockey whore. Damn right. What about the raffle pick? We'll get back to raffle picks once people stop throwing money at my face. If you were in my situation, you'd tell me that you'd turn down someone just being like, here, here's some money, let me make a pick in a franchise mode. you turn it down? You're a braver person than I am. 
Uh, go to demon sort by potential. That I can do. Trade Matthew Perot. Uh, Neanderthal, you're not wrong. I'm gonna do that after because they're gonna be very minor picks. Very minor picks. You already have the money. Do I, though? Do I? Could he de deeds the pick before mine because mine's more of a joke. Did Deeds win the last raffle? Is that what I missed? Is that why Deeds asked? I didn't see Pyro draw another name. Otherwise, I, uh, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> oh, well, shit. Deeds, we'll make it up to you. We'll make it up to you. You might not get this one, but we'll make it up to you. I promise. Oh, God. What are you thinking, Warrior? Unless you're wanting to see overalls here. Which, I mean... They can be a little bit... They can be a little bit rough. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Deeds will get the next one. Then we might go Void and Knucklehead. Wallstead? I mean, there is Downey there, but he's projected to go later. Will Wallstead be worth it? Primo, better than not, you changed my mind. Yeah, that's a, that's a legitimate argument. Wallstead projected to be two years away. Warriors going for the young Swedish goaltender. Yes, for Wallstead. Who, fun fact, was on the receiving end of an upgrade. Fun fact. Yeah. Deserves it, too. Warrior, hell of a pick. You should have known he was good, too, because he was in the first round. Uh, Deeds, are you ready? You're on the clock with pick number 57. And then we're going uh, Void and then Knucklehead, and then we'll go back to the raffle if people are done fucking around. All right, Deeds is ready. Let's rock and roll. I will recap the draft as well once we're towards the end of it. 20 bucks wasted for that. <laughs> Deeds, you know the deal. You've been here before. You know how this works. 250 on the clock, baby. So anyway, you can do a new franchise mode blindfolded. Uh, now rebuild, that's why I typically for the first uh, year or two's worth of the draft, I let the AI makes the, uh, make the picks. I know I did that for the first year draft in like the Kings mode. So let me see some grades. You have Sadikov, B's and C's. An A in physical for Radic Pavlik, if it can be trusted. Uh, decent offensive grades for Topi Sarenheimo. Uh, Ole Josephson not looking that good. A couple of B's for Kapaduka. An A in shooting potentially for Schwedberg. B's and C's for Nesbitt. Nothing on Wisniewski. Uh, Santa Viore also looking good offensively. And then Bennett Benson in goal. Did I go down far enough is the question. Fair enough, Warrior. Can I get Warrior to hit the raffle three times and the third person just makes the pick? Probably not. <laughs> Dink and Flicka, huh? Hell of a name. Appreciate the follow. Uh, Void just confused Pyro and Warrior. He sure did. Uh, give me the finish, Sarenheimer. Deeds, are you confirming? 18-year-old Topi Sarenheimer. Three-year ETA for him. Are you confirming it? Are you confirming it? He's confirming it. Let's do it. Topi Sarenheimer. How good are you? So close. So close. How do you become VIP? Uh, by being subbed for long enough. <laughs> Which, uh, you know, rebuild at 13. You're, you're pretty much there. Although I really do need to redo the list. It eventually becomes more and more exclusive. <laughs> so, uh, Void, you are up. You are up, then Knucklehead, then we go back to the raffle. 119th overall, Void. Are there any ROWs? I don't think so. Strong sneeze again. Ah, I need to go blow my nose, to be honest. But hey, what are we going to do? R-O-W. No R-O-W's, Void. Nobody in the rest of world, unfortunately. Ah, shit. 119, a ping Void will never see. 
I mean, Rebuild, you deserve it off of the resub. Basically, the general rule of thumb is if someone has a can for the uh, sub icon, they pretty much get it. So. Go with Bomic. We need more low top sixes in this place. <laughs> Are you going to confirm... Are you going to confirm Jameson Bomick? He's an overager with those grades and a five-year ETA. You're confirming it. Are you still confirming it? Are you sure? Are you sure? We need more low top sixes. Damn it, he's confirming it. He is confirming it. Jameson Bomick. Was actually a low elite, go figure, but he's a 53 at 19 years old. Jameson Bomick. Welcome aboard. Knucklehead, are you ready for pick number 121? Are you ready? Throw him out. <laughs> he's too good. Get rid of him. Trade him for a seventh, right? Ah, oh, man. Go to OHL and start scrolling. You got it, baby. We're going to the O with the likes of Frank Jenkins, Emmett Pierce, Cole Rocott, Mitch Brewer, Billy Constantino, Andrew Perot, Arbor Shikish, Theo Hill, Adam Varga, Dylan Robinson, Cam Peters, Dustin Hutton, Merrick Burka. I won't nail it. Shaheel Panwar, hell of a name. Raymond Marshall, Eric Betts, Mark Woolley, Liam Ross, Griffin Wilson, Emiliano Beta, Joe Carroll. Bryce Karuk, Ashton Reeser. Oh, Narvin or Navrin Mutter. I've never known how to say his name correctly. Nathan Allenson. Peyton Vessio. Nathan Steos. Is it Jack Eye? I'll take your word for it. Grayson Ladd. Danik Drouin. Simon Rose. Mike Pediz Pedizian. Growing with Pediz Pedizian. Ty Collins. Manuel Albert. Emmett Sproul. Cody Morgan, Ian Lemieux, Glenn Coletta, Matthew Hardwick, Knucklehead for the love of God, who are you looking for? Ryan Stepien, Santiago Thorburn, Jonathan Lemaire, oh, Callan Christner, Matthew Sreddle, Sreddle, Jacob Winterton, Ben Roger, Calvin Watson, Alex Johnston, Nolan DeGoose. DeGoosey? DeGrassi. Nolan DeGrassi. Is he also in a wheelchair? Kari of Heroin. Duncan Penman. Evan Heward. William Porta Portacalis. William Portobello. Steak. Dominic M Mufari? What the hell? Matthew Papais. Pace. Papa is. Matthew Papa is. Take Panwar. How far up was Panwar? Fuck. There you are. Sahil Panwar. The 19 year old is going to be the pick. He's got good character and one hell of a chin. Welcome, Mr. Panwar. That's, uh, that's about as expected. Pyro. We need a name. Again, I'll go back to the first round. Pyro, we need a name. Unless you already drew one and I missed it. Dude! Dude. Dude. You ready? Alright, dude. You know how this works. You've been here before. You're on the clock. Let's rock and roll. In fairness, I should have gone and traded Perosa, right? So I might have been able to get a fourth form. We'll do it after this pick. What's it gonna be, Dude. What's it gonna be? You know how. Dallin Wilton! Simon Levine. Check out. Uh, I was gonna say if you check out the first round, but okay, we'll do picks. Potential. You got it. Sergey Kasparitis. Here, I'll just start scrolling through. Kasparitis. Season B. Not much good there from Gustafson. Siegel. Eh. Gerard. Eh. That's more of a Gerard. Von Arks, eh, Timmons, eh, Curry, eh, Pajo, eh, Valentenko, meh, Alexiev, meh, 
Uh, Jaden Green's listed as a gem with a five-year ETA. He's a confirmed low elite. Drake Allison. Tyler Party. Uh, there's not much there for confirmed uh, good overalls, but at least Landon Lucic has confidence. So, it's a little bit rough. Mirko, or Miko Filpula has uh, good shooting, apparently. How's the DEL look? Let's find out. That's how the DEL looks. Does that answer your question? At least Emil Geisberger's there, though. Have ever drafted a lower league goalie? I don't know, actually. That's a good question. I have no idea. I have no idea. Saw that league of player back in potential. Uh... These are the potentials for those in Liga. Let's see, CS ranks. No, I can't. Like, there's no good place to put the webcam when you're drafting. This is about it. Although, if I go for the grinder, dude, are you confirming? Len Harkins. It's a uh, D minus in defense. Are you confirming the Harkins? There's like again, like no place to properly put this. But I will do the. We'll do what we can. Harkins confirmed. The Norwegian is a low bottom six. A pirate. Before we get another name, you can draw the name if you want. They'll have time to prep. But I need to see before Sergachev makes this pick if uh, I can get anything back from some of our expiring contracts like Eric Comrie. Uh, Braswa is super inconsistent. Probably going to let him go this year. Move the webcam to the top corner. I can move the webcam anywhere, dude, but that doesn't mean it's going to be good. You know? We'll take that trade from Arizona for Braswa. We'll uh, bring in a different backup this year. Let's see. Can I get anything for Luke Green? Nope. Tucker Pullman's not happy here. Can I get anything for him? Fifth and a seventh. The rights to Ranta. Fifth and a seventh seems to be about as good as it's going to get. Take that from Washington. We're going to hold on to Pionk. His value's through the fucking roof right now as an RFA. Can I get anything for Carl Dahlstrom? Nika we're going to keep. Chernock we're going to keep. Pulock we're keeping. I doubt I can get anything for Wallman. We're going to try this with uh, basically everyone on an expiring deal. Nothing for Panda Sample. And there's going to be a, a good amount of roster turnover this year, and rightfully so. Can I get anything for Logan O'Connor? No. Rosovic's going. Andrew Kopp, I don't know if I'm bringing you back. Probably not. You're going to be looking for too much. Fifth round pick is about the best pick we can get. Take the fifth and a sixth. There was a fifth and a sixth offer for this year, wasn't there? There was. Boston. Let's do it. Line we're holding on to. Max Verineau. I'm not trading line. Eagles, take it easy. We'll catch you later. Let's see. Left wings here. Mikheyev. I'd prefer to keep, but he's probably going to be too expensive, and he also botched it in the playoffs. Fourth round pick. Fourth and a seventh from Carolina. Fourth and a seventh from Minnesota. Fourth and a seventh. Let's take that from Tampa. See you later, McKayev. Uh, McKenzie. Can I get anything for you? Nope. 
before losing so much value on him. I mean, probably, but he's going to ask for way too much money, and I don't trust him anymore. No one wants Matthew Perot. I mean, I, there was no way I was bringing back McKayev after he choked in the playoffs. There was no way. Dimitro Timoshov. Nobody's interested. And then four centers on expiring deals. Might as well check here. Michael Spot check. Nope. Mr. Badan. Nope. As that pick went through, Billy Constantino picked up by Philly. I mean, the problem is we're going to be at the point in this draft where it's like, is it really going to be worth it to raffle off these picks? Probably not. Because the odds of getting somebody good has uh, just gone down drastically. Can I get anything for Adam Lowry? I think he's going to be a bit too expensive. Get a seventh for him. Take that seventh from Buffalo. All right, we're good. All right. Well, Pyro, did we have a name? Most of this chat does mean picks anyway. That's true, but you kind of want to hope that someone can get somebody half decent. Let me take a look at the class really quickly. Oh, that's right, it was Sergachev. I mean, there might be a slight chance of getting somebody half decent. We'll keep it alive for the moment. Sergachev, are you ready? You are on the clock. Wait for the word. Wait for the word. Sergachev's ready. Let's rock. You're in the fifth round. Will he select Gilbert Gottfried? Excuse me, it's Ryan. Fair enough. Sergachev confirms it. A low elite in Jaden Green. A 19 year old, the overall is going to be pretty bad. But he is a confirmed low elite. Fair enough. Will it change though with him being in the 250s? Yep, there you go. So, again, a friendly reminder to listen to your old pal Toogie. Picks beyond 200 are broken. And I've told you guys this plenty of times before. Picks beyond 200 this year are broken. There is another perfect example, even if it's confirmed. That's why you listen to your old pal too. Catcher, do you even want to? Do you even want to try? I mean, you're on the clock. Go to the OHL and start scrolling. Fuck's sake, architect, what's up? How did uh? How did Cod go? How did Cod go? A game I hate with a passion because you're a super soldier who can jump a high fence but can't jump over a rock. Not that I'm speaking from experience. Uh, died to RPGs many times. That sounds about right. The first Kitchener player. That would have been back here, right? No, maybe not. Have we not seen a Kitchener player yet? First Kitchener Ranger is going to be ah, Mike Petizian. Way to go, Mike. As of catcher, you're getting drafted. I've seen you playing it a lot. Yeah, oh yeah, Architect, I have been, and I fucking hate it. I play it because my friends like it, but it is... Pyro, before we do another name, this draft, I think, is going to be a bit of a bust at this point. Let me check where these dudes are projected. The only guys worth drafting to take a chance on at this point are Gerard, Von Arks, Timmons, and Curry. I would not recommend taking even anyone like Drake Allison because odds are it's going to backfire. But Zesty, it's up to you. Bay yeah, Architect, I think it is uh, one of the worst designed first-person shooters ever made. If there was a game that does not deserve its popularity, it's God. In a particular war zone. It is absolute trash. It is absolute trash. Like I said, there, there was a, a set of rocks we got forced into in the last round that I played. 
We'll see who Zesty says to go for here. There was a set of rocks near the airport my team got forced into. I'm trying to climb up on it because I know in a matter of moments some dude's gonna come over the top of the rock and just shoot down at me. And I'm trying to climb up the rock and I'm a super soldier apparently who can't climb up a fucking rock that's this high off the ground. But I can climb a fence that's this high off the ground. Because COD is trash. <laughs> Let's look for Italians. Zesty, there won't be any Italians. More than likely. I mean, I can look, but it is incredibly unlikely because there's nobody in the rest of the world. I mean, I can adhere to that request, but uh, again, like in Russia, they're not going to generate. They're not going to generate in Sweden. They're not going to generate in Finland. The only place they're really going to generate is in Switzerland, yeah. And even... Well! That happened quickly. Lenork Pozo! Are we taking him? I can check the DEL as well. As incredibly as unlikely... As incredibly unlikely as it is. Yeah. Somehow, some way, this meme was meant to live. Zesty, are we taking... The 6'3 defenseman, 18-year-old Len Okposa, the pride of Italy. That is the question. Waiting for confirmation. Zesty's got 110 left on the clock. Zesty gets bops for cap use. It's confirmed. Thank you. Low seventh. Good for the memes, though. Low seventh. As OG drops the big host. You love to see it. OG, what's going on, buddy? How did the stream go? Architect was talking to me about numerous RPG deaths in COD. Again, the worst first person shooter I have possibly ever played. Yet, for still some reason, play it. Byer, do we have another name? I still need to recap the first round. He's not actually drunk? Damn. Pablo, what's up, by the way? Ender, one David Peril, 57. Are you here? There's a raccoon in my attic. God damn it, Poja. God damn it. I do have to show OG who's on the Dallas Stars here. Ender, are you here? Ender. Looking for... Hey, there we go. Alright, Ender, you're on the clock. Let's do it. You know how this works. You've done it before. You got three minutes to work with, dog. Ah. Dropping my damn pen. And try and get some sleep. All text, we love you. Take it easy. Enjoy said sleep. Or at least try to. It's 50 degrees outside. It's not too bad. Fuck it, he says. Go for Von Ark. Okay. Len Von Arks. The 19-year-old goalie. No confirmed ETA. Len is the pick. Good old Len. Medium starter's not bad. He's only a 51, though. At 19. Good old Len. Pyro. Another name. Let's speed run the last few here. Len Oposo and Len Von Ark, right? Montreal Rebuild. You're on the clock. In three, two, one. You're on the clock, buddy. Make it happen. There are still some good players, apparently, to be claimed here. So, we now have the lens. Find the highest ranked member of the Halifax Mooseheads. Well, that didn't take long. It's going to be Cole Stewart. Cole Stewart. I mean, dude, I'm going to. Probably once we make our final pick. Cole Stewart is the pick. Should have seen that coming. Pick 199. Pyro, who's it going to? 
Let's get through these last few rounds. Damn it, we're in round seven. It's Cody. Pick the first forward that is a point per game or close to it by a margin of five points. Cody, I love you. Thank you for having that fucking ready to go. So the first forward that's at a point per game or close to it by a margin of five. Well, I mean, unfortunately, only 49 there. First guy is close to a point per game. Even Gordon Steves isn't that close. This uh, could be easier said than done, though. Oh, boy. I mean, Wilson's at a lovely 50. Uh, Jake and Smallwood. He's on the board. Just remember that. Uh, so, Cody, your request as much as I loved it. Ha ha! We got one. It's Bjorn Sturm with one point in four games. We have a winner. Someone with less than five games played. Rebuild, you were right. It is the German, Bjorn Sturm, son of Marco. Son of Marco, Bjorn Sturm. That's how it works. Welcome, Bjorn. He's a medium bottom six grinder. You'll love to see it. You'll love to see it. Way to go, Bjorn. Pyro. I think we have one more pick left in this draft. Let me double check that for you. It's going to be catcher. With the penultimate pick. Back to back, of course. Catcher and Jay. Back to back picks in the seventh round. Catcher, who's it going to be? And Jay, better be paying attention here as well because there are some players on the board that uh, you'll be seeing here too. Find me another Kitchener boy. Can do. Can do. The next, didn't Catcher already go? Did he? If not, it's Jay. I don't remember if Catcher went or not. Did Catcher already pick? I don't even know. If he did, I don't really give a shit. We're going for another Kitchener boy. Catcher already got the pick. Fine, Jay, you're on the board. Go. And Pyro, we need one more pick. Jay is on the board. Go, Jay, go. I mean, in fairness, Pyro, we had, I said, like, right at that moment that we have two picks left. So I figured you just pick twice. Sox gets it, apparently. Ah, uh, dude, we'll be okay. Go to your biggest position you need and sort by gem. I'm just going to sort by gem, then, because we need everybody. Not a single remaining gem in this draft. Please try again. I know Sox is going to say look for a bomb Easter. <laughs> now Sox, what's the backup plan when there isn't a bomb Easter? Uh, dude, not unless it's the final pick of the draft, which it shouldn't be. And if not, then I know what Sox is going to do, so it's fine. Sort by scout pick. And that I can do. Highest rated is Joe Palin. And Leo Tallberger up there. Boris Breeland. Take Smallwood or Riot. Hey, it's not up to me, dog. I don't get to make that pick. I don't get to make that pick. I'm sorry. What do you want from me? Jay, you're running out of time. I mean, catch her, maybe. I said SR. I mean, sure. That's different than scout rank. That's scout recommendation. Now, why handle Antropop and Dome? 30 seconds, dog.
Brick roll it was. You know what sucks? Before I find the bow meester. Before I find the bow meester. Let's call some timeouts and revisit this draft. So first round. Again, it was Roddy, Clark, a couple computer generated guys on the move. Borgo joins uh, Jack Hughes in Dallas. Genta to Vegas. We took Nidamaki. Sillinger went to Buffalo. Beniers to St. Louis. Brennan Offman to Buffalo as well. So a pretty good draft there for Buffalo. Two decent left wing additions. Wilmer to Tampa. Fabian LaSalle to Pittsburgh. Owen oh, Power to Anaheim. Logan Stan Coven to Carolina. Carson Lambos, San, I was going to say San Louis, San Jose. Daniel Shaker to Colorado. Jeremy Waugh to Ottawa. Luke Hughes went to St. Louis. Some guy named Knudsen on the board. Or off the board. Luca. A couple more computer generated guys here. Sposal is real, though. Balmez to the Islanders. Jesus, what a steal for them. Wallstead, of course, we picked up at the end. And guys like Anton Olsen, the in the Emmy, that dropped down a little bit. So, you know. Some other familiar names that have kind of dropped down the charts a little bit. Trevor Wong, Simon Robertson, The Sheergle. I don't know how the hell to say that name. Avery Hayes. Uh, the other Korzak, Zernkovic. Lassard, Beliveau, Luke Middlestat went to Pittsburgh in the middle of the second round. Thoughts on the Melnick situation? I heard about it, but I didn't read up on it. Holy low elites, by the way, in the middle of the second round. I heard about the Melnick thing, but I didn't read about it, so I don't have an opinion. Because that's called being a reasonable human. I don't just say I have an opinion. I don't actually have one. Alright, so there you go. Kind of gives you an idea. Let's see if we can find a Bome Easter. Socks, I hope you have a backup plan. If there is not a Bome Easter. After this, I need to go blow my nose and grab some Palmer. Is there a Bome Easter? Let's find out. Backup plan with Smallwood. Okay, cool. No Bome Easters. No Bome Easters. I don't know if Jake and Smallwood's still on the board. He might have gone. I just went all the way around for no reason. Is Jake and Smallwood still on the board? And yes, for the record, hey, there's Jake. I mean, for the record, there are uh, the created players from the Patreon series that uh, that I had to keep in the game because otherwise I have to edit them and then remove them, and it's a pain in the ass. I'm not taking your own player. We're taking Smallwood. I refuse to take Killer Socks. There's no way. I refuse. But it's funny that you guys are still there. Uh, we're taking Jake and Smallwood just to piss you off. Oh, God. Good old Jake and Smallwood. I'll be back in one second. Let me go grab a drink really quickly. And uh, we'll go through this off season and get a look at the Lions heading into season three. I'm very intrigued to see how it is. Next year it is. I refuse to let you guys pick them no matter how much money. No matter how much money you send. Maybe. Alright, with that we interrupt we interrupt the chair stream. As we need to do. Ah oh boy, good old Jake and Smallwood to the Winnipeg Jets. You love to see it. So with that, this draft is over. Uh, a lot of picks there. The highlight clearly Jake and Smallwood. Clearly. There was 
nobody else to pick there, clearly. <laughs> All right, uh, resign phase. Before we do that, let me see what we got. Can you sign my player in free agency? No. <laughs> no, I can't. All right, Mikhail Burdine. You need a new deal. Let's go ahead and sign you. Harvard Holm. Go ahead and sign you. And Eric Comrie, we're going to drop for obvious reasons. Uh, yeah, catcher, I can use the whole player search thing. Uh, Neil Peok. It's actually not that bad. Four-year deal is not that bad if we drop that down. He is going to be one of the cores of our defense. Six, six, seven, five, huh? It would almost make more sense to trade Pionk. Rebuild, I love you. I love you. Thank you for that. You do have some franchise amount to catch up on, for sure. Unfortunately, I haven't been able to put them in the playlist yet, but I need to do that. Pionk with his trade value, you know, though, then again, an 87 is a really good defenseman in this. We're going to hold on to him for that price. Uh, Ryan Pulock does not want to come back, and unfortunately, he's a UFA. So that is problematic. But if he'll sign the deal he's looking for, that's tremendous news for me. Chernock. Two years, he'd still be an RFA. Let's see, that's four, six, five, oh. Drops him down to three, nine, seven, five, which is a pretty good deal for him. Or to pay him that than pay Brendan Dillon three million a year. Sammy Niku. Get him on a one year deal, hopefully. It'll be a one, two, seven, five. Maybe an RFA at the end of next year. Van de Sample, Dahlstrom, Wallman, Green. Gonna let all of them go. Patrick Line needs to be signed, regardless of what anyone says. We're looking at three years to keep him as an RFA. Thoughts on chocolate peanut butter milk? I how can I have thoughts on it if I've never had it? It sounds let's go with interesting. And a mouthful in more ways than one. Sign line A, Jack Roslovich. I don't want you to go anywhere. Two years for you at 285. 285 for you. Perfect third liner for us. Connor Verno can go. Matthew Perot certainly on the way out. As is everyone else there. And center is Harkins. Harkins. See if we can bring you back. And again, everybody else can go. So. We'll see who signs these deals. I mean, look, it's it's honestly worked for me. I haven't had issues like other people have had in terms of, like, oh, it says this guy will still be an RFA, but he isn't. I honestly haven't had an issue with it. For every every time I've done it, I haven't had an issue with it like other people have. Pionk, Roslovich, Harkins, Niku, Line, Pulock did reject, which would suck because we gave up a decent amount to get him. But if he leaves, he leaves. If he dies, he dies. Okay, so we got 12 million bucks here. Expiring deals. Comrie's going to go. I do want to bring back Pulock. It's still a fair deal for him if I can get him under that contract. Simon Lundmark. Sign you to your RFA. Pro Connor. It's just sneaking in that we needed to sign. Everybody else can be dropped. Even N, who was honestly pretty good last year. Pulock still rejected. Henry Nikonen and Simon Lundmark signed. We might not be able to keep Ryan Pulock. Which would kind of suck. How much money we're going to give him is dependent on who the free agent options are that are out there. So let's see. Okay, so potential free agents include Ovi, Dadanoff, Hall, Kovalchuk, Gallagher, Tanner Pearson. Montreal's apparently letting Jaden Schwartz go. 
And for the defense, Petrangelo, Petrie. Pulak's going to be one of the top options out there. I got to sign him. I got to sign him. I think Freddie Anderson, Igor Shostyorkin might be a free agent. So, yeah. Let's see if we can hold on to old Ryan Pulak. Prefer to not let you go. What about five years of five? Five rebuild, no worries, buddy. I hope you enjoy it. There are uh, what, a series and a half already for you to catch up on. There'll be a new episode of the Houston series up tomorrow. So. Oh, Ryan, you are being a pain in the ass. A one year. I almost bought out Kyle Connor because I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> you imagine? Uh, let's go one year, six million. See if we can just keep you around for a year. Maybe you'll change your mind about resigning. There we go. All right, so we got uh, 6.9 million to work with in terms of resigning. Which, uh. Nice. There we go. That's worth it. Uh, so, yeah, catcher, that is in the $10 tier right now. But of course, you know, that comes as well with everything else that's there, too. And of course, still looking for suggestions on how to make that uh, even more worth it to people. All right, we're good. We are good. I am excited to see how free agency pans out for everybody else, too. Phillips and Nichols, not bad. All right. So we let go of a lot of people. But our team is still looking pretty, pretty good. Let's see again. Goalie-wise, we need a backup because we let go of Brassois. And I don't think Berdine will be good enough. So we need a backup goalie and another uh, depth goalie. Our defense is pretty much set. I think Vili Heinola will make the team next year. So I'm thinking we can just move forward with the defense that we have. And then forward-wise, I mean, our top six is set. Rosovic, Nidimaki, Veselainen's threatening to make the team. We don't really have to do anything in this free agent period aside from, you know, sign depth players and try to get some top prospects. I'm pretty happy with the team and where it is right now. We're not really in a position to be like, oh yeah, let's sign Ovechkin and then move him, you know? But for goaltenders right now, Freddie Anderson's the cream of the crop there. Ranta, Anderson, Rene, Igor Shostyorkin did hit the open market. Chicago's going in for Shishurkin, so at least they're smart. <sighs> we wouldn't be saving that much money on Shishurkin over keeping Hellebuck. And then long-term Shishurkin would cost more than him anyway, so that's not a position to get into. I'd go for Craig Anderson, but I'd be too afraid he'd drop. Ranta is looking for nothing at all, but he only has 70 durability, which is kind of concerning. Morazic, I don't really trust Morazic. 896 last year. Grubauer was pretty good last year. And then the King, I don't you know trust that he wouldn't regress. And the dude at the bottom here is Bennington, but he was also pretty rough last year too. Yaroslav Halak, I don't trust that he wouldn't regress. I mean, if we were to put money into a backup, which is where we have money to spend, it would make sense for it to be Ranta. And just hopefully he doesn't get hurt based off of not being the starter. So it's either Ranta or Grubauer. So I don't really trust Morazic. How was Grubauer in season one? We know how he was in season two. Okay. So 904 and a 910. How was Ranta been? We gotta go for Ranta. And just hope that he doesn't get hurt. And just hope that he doesn't get hurt. But we have that extra money to spend. Jay, no, I did not. Oh, boy. Got to inform yourself, dog. Uh, which, again, I will inform everybody, as I always do. It is Igor Shesterkin, a.k.a. Shesterkin, 
Shistyorkin's the proper spelling. This is more of the uh, Americanized, Englishized setup here. And uh, to quickly, here we'll hop back to this screen for a moment. Mute this so I don't get in trouble on either platform. We'll bump up this really quickly and... Igor Shistyorkin. Oh, look at that. The Russian guy says Shistyorkin. Igor Shistyorkin. His name is correct. I thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. I thank you very much for coming to my TED Talk. It's great having you here. Every other place has Shistokin because everyone else is an idiot. <laughs> All right, so Ranta's the guy. Are there any goalie prospects? Capo Kakinen is an RFA. Let's do it. Capo Kakinen is the guy. For example, I mean, same spelling, but everyone's like, oh, Peter Forsberg. Philip Forsberg. That's not how you say Berg in Swedish. It's Peter Forsby. But nobody calls him Forsby. It's Forsberg. <laughs> it's because we, we don't do things properly in North America when saying player names. <laughs> I was missing. You, they're not idiots for getting it wrong, but it's just, it's kind of how we do things. Uh, what is Minnesota's cap space? So Shesterkin's an idiot for having a Shesterkin jersey. To bring it, I was being sarcastic. You are feisty tonight, and it's not a good look for you. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Minnesota has all the cap space in the world. They're going to be able to match it if they want to. Patrick, thank you for the follow, by the way. I do appreciate it. Let's see if there are any other prospects that were there. I don't think there was, though. But like I said, for forwards and defense, we're pretty much good. But it makes sense to spend the money on Ranta. Yeah, there's nobody else. Defensive prospects. Shalosky's looking for a lot. I don't really want to give that up. Yeah, there's nobody there. And then for forwards, just Mikheyev. But yeah, see, he's looking for five million bucks. We were going to lose him no matter what. All right, so we're good. Let's see where uh, all the top free agents end up. Although, actually here, just just in case. Like, Ryan Murray's not looking for much. Jamie Alexiak's not looking for much, but I'm still going to hold off. I was wondering if there were any top players who were looking for dirt, you know, dirt cheap contracts. Not really. Aside from Blake Coleman. Which we would be incredibly dumb to not sign Blake Coleman to this contract. I don't know what it is about Blake Coleman and him not wanting money. But for some reason, Blake Coleman just doesn't like to get paid. And Stefan Nason's right there, too. How much money do we have? 6.9 million. So we already have quite a bit of money invested. I know it's cut off right now. Um, I really should just stay over here. It cuts off a lot less. Uh, Chandler Stevenson is also looking for a dirt cheap contract. Pittsburgh's in on him, too. He'd be a really good depth forward to bring in. And from there, I think we're good. So, really quickly. Really quickly. Let me double check the coaching staff. And then we're going to see how free agency goes down. I apparently need an AHL goalie coach. Oh, God. Oh, boy. Ooh, B-rated goalie coach named Clapperton. What's your teaching? Pfft, Jesus Christ. This will be our AHL goalie coach, for God's sakes. Sign him up. Sign him up. I mean, he deserves to be like an NHL head coach with those stats, but if he signs this contract, it's a steal and a half. All right. Good stuff there. And then for scouts, I didn't see how many that we need. We'll send an offer out to Nikitin. I mean, this is the year to completely redo our scouting department. Because we still have some scouts who are not very good. So as much as I hate to do this, it will uh, make it more interesting for the viewer pick drafts here to uh, have the best scouts possible. Would you make a trade in this or a general situation? What are we talking? Oh, sign Kim Hagos. 
Jason Jarvis. And Carter. So good, they named him twice. I love this game. I love this game. Carter, Carter. Kata, Kata. You gotta love it. You gotta love it. Kata, Kata. What's his middle name? Take a guess. All right. Uh, I do not want Ryan Suter. Thank you. Here, let me uh, decline that. I never really want an AI trade offer again. So I'm going to go over here. And we are going to go to trade offer notifications. Leave me the hell alone. If I ever need a trade, I do it myself. How often have you ever seen me accept a trade an AI sent to me? So let's sim a couple of days, see what happens. Clapperton accepts, so we have an unbelievable AHL goalie coach. Keaton signs, Dubinsky, just getting the staff sorted out here. AI yeah, trades are funny to look at, though. They are, but they're also annoying at a time like this where I care about free agent offers. Carter Carter signed. Let's see, still waiting to hear from Ranta and Blake Coleman. Auntie Ranta is our new backup. Blake Coleman signs, Chandler Stevenson signs. Beautiful. I got my three targets. Think anyone will sign Jake Allen with that five-year deal? I fucking hope so. So we're only on 27 contracts. We got, you know, just under four million to work with. So that's good though. I want to keep that cap space there while our core is locked up. So we're looking okay. Let's sim another day or two. Alright, there we go. Let's take a look. Free agency, baby. Mike Riley to Pittsburgh, Cody Eakin to Anaheim, Berchke to Florida, Richardson to Boston, Pekka Rene goes to Carolina, Nick Bjugstad to Philly, Peter Morazic to Philly on a one-year deal, Philip Grubauer, man, Philly is tired of winning the President's Trophy and choking, David Savard to Colorado, Adam Larson to Nashville, Alexiak back to Dallas, Toronto finally gets Justin Williams, Brian Dezingo to Anaheim, Paul Stashney to Philly, Thomas Tartar... It's the tag. Oh, God. I, I lost my train of thought midway through that because he signed a fucking six-year deal with Minnesota. Ta -ta! Ta -ta! Tomas! Ta -ta! you love to see it. you love to see it. Let's see. The New York Rangers signed Derek Ryan. Y'all are Mia to Arizona, along with Alex Ovechkin. Is Deke Slayer here? Because let it be known that Alex Ovechkin is going to the desert. Fantastic. We'll have to check the money total. But Ovi be going to the desert, dog. Josh Dickinson to Colorado, Steven Johns to Boston. Yanmark to Ottawa, Scott Lawton to Ottawa, Jake McCabe to the Islanders, Chandler Stevenson, of course, signed with us, Sezikis back to the Isles, Phil Pula to Vancouver for two years, Stefan Nason to Montreal, Cody Ceci goes to Calgary, still somehow getting work, Tampa signs Patrick Nemeth, Devon Taves to Vancouver, Carl Soderberg to Calgary, of course, we signed Blake Coleman, Eunice Brodine, five years with the Islanders, Jesus. Shestkin, Shestjorkin goes to Chicago. So the Hawks have themselves a goalie. So the Rangers didn't keep him. Idiots. Ryan Murray to Washington. Nemesnikov to Dallas. Ian Cole to Edmonton on a four-year deal. Nick Foligno to the Rangers. William McKayev to Nashville. Three years for him. Chalosky stays in Detroit. Five-year deal. Galchenyuk to San Jose. So no KHL for Galchenyuk. Wouldn't that be great in this game if that was actually an option? Uh, we advance. We'll go another week. One week at a time is how we will handle this. Scott Mayfield and the recently signed Casey Sezikis, along with a third round pick, are off to Edmonton for a first and a fifth. Jesus. Yeah, to bring it, I don't care, though. We can look when we edit the lights. It's just easier and more convenient that way. We kill two birds with one stone. 
<laughs> All right, another week gone. Let's see what we got. I think it just said the Blues. The Blues bring back Jake Allen. Jay Boehm Easter to Arizona. Barclay Goodrow to Carolina. Corrali to Buffalo. Nieto to Edmonton. Jake Allen signs for five years in St. Louis. Jake Allen beat Jordan Bennington. Bobo Carpenter stays with the Islanders. Uh, Vancouver signs some dude named Boris Kalina. Bennington goes to Nashville. Boyle to Pittsburgh. Adam Lowry to Detroit. Jason Spetz of the San Jose. Zadoroff to Detroit. Jordan Wheel back to Montreal. Henrik Lundqvist goes to Colorado. So the Rangers didn't hold on to Lundqvist or Shostyorkin. Drake Kajula to Tampa. Jordan Esterle to New Jersey. Roman Polak to Ottawa. <laughs> Andre Sekiro to Washington. Beaulieu to New York. TBR to Edmonton. Chase on to Anaheim. Niskin into the Rangers too. Freddie Anderson goes to the Blue Jackets. Calvert to San Jose, Bogosian to Nashville. Jonas Gustafson sticking around. He goes to Pittsburgh. Adam Pellick to Minnesota. Brandon Saad to Anaheim. Connor Sherry to Minnesota for four years. David Backus still somehow getting work. Darren Helm to Ottawa. Tyler Mott to Vancouver. Christian Juice and Luke Glenn Denning to Tampa. Carter Rowney. Brock McGinn to Florida. Marcus Felino on the move. Ryan Graves to Chicago. Derek Grant goes to Carolina. Eric Branson to Calgary for three years. Radko Gudis to Detroit. Tyler Party to Vancouver. Brandon Dubinsky to Boston. Brad Hunt to Buffalo. Holy Sinex. Jason Demers to Colorado. To Foley to Arizona to play with Ovi. Mike Riley and then Cody Eakin. We had seen those moves already. There have been some crazy moves. There have been some crazy moves. And that's just the first two weeks. Oh, let's keep rolling here. No other major trades, though. This was around the time last year where we signed Jack Hughes. All right. Let's see. Jonathan Bernier to San Jose. Zach Sanford and Ponte Zaberg to Columbus. Lewis to Pittsburgh. Slater Cuckoo. Greg Paterno to Minnesota. Mark Stahl goes to Calgary. Rafa Copter to Colorado, Grabner to Vegas, Martinuk, Gabe Bork to New Jersey, Charles Houdon to Washington, Kevin Miller to Chicago, Jujar Kyra goes to New Jersey, Brian Elliott to San Jose, Johan Larson, Toby Reeder, Brandon Sutter, Capo Kakinen stays in Minnesota, Coburn and Chris Russell to Columbus, Ugh. Christian Milan to Ottawa, Kalika, Brendan Smith got three years from Chicago. Uh, let's see. Trevor Moore stays in Los Angeles. Schaller, Belmar, Halak to Anaheim. Gergensons, Riley, Anderson. Tyler Bozak to Minnesota. Thornton to Minnesota. Jesus. Alright, so Taylor Hall, as mentioned in chat, is still out there. Or not. He must have signed. Must have signed him. He must have just missed it. Kovalchuk's out there, though, but he's still looking for a shit ton, as is Koivu. We could bring Cop and Perot back. Devils, take it easy. We love you. We'll catch you later. I'm going to look to bring back Cop and Perot uh, for the sake of morale on the team. Because they're both looking for uh, pretty cheap contracts. And uh, teams are apparently interested in both. So I'll do my due diligence. And look to bring both of them back. Sevier's there. Tucker Pullman's out there too. Good option to bring back former Jets on depth options for the sake of morale. Alright, we're good from there. We're good from there. Let's see what I got here. All right, I think we're good. Let's see what happens with those. Uh, Perot signed immediately. <laughs> he wanted to come back. Cop is back. What about Pullman? Pullman's back. Perfect. Good morale boost for the team. Good morale boost for the team. Let's take a look at our depth. I think free agent-wise, we're pretty much done. The uh, the AI is not exactly 
you know, making the money moves here. So I still need a depth goaltender. Still need a depth goaltender. Someone who could step up to the NHL if need be. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three. We need a lot of depth defensemen. We need like seven depth defensemen. <laughs> so let's see if we can find anybody here. Let's see if we can find anybody. We'll be all right. 2.5 million to work with, so it's got to be people on two-way deals. See, so goalie-wise, actually, if there's anybody with a good potential, now Braswa is there. Nadelkovic isn't going to get much better. And for backups, Werner, Johansson, Valalta. Valalta's actually a decent shout. Alexis Gravel is there too. It's either Velalta, Gravel, or Brassois. Although technically, I could sign uh, I could sign both of them, and I'm going to. I'm going to sign Brassois. One year deal for him. And uh, we're going to stop Alexis Gravel from rotting on the uh, free agent list. I'm going to sign him up. And then we need a thousand depth defensemen, as mentioned. Let's see, we're looking for dudes who can still potentially develop. So, Santu Kinnunen. Sure. Sign you to your ELC. Uh, Benjamin Gleason. I meant to sign you for more than one year, but that's fine. Uh, Berglund, you're, you're just not... You're not going to develop, but you were drafted by the Bruins, so fuck it. It's three. Let's go for Cam Deneen. It's number four. Walfordson will be the fifth. Johansson will be the sixth. These guys aren't going to develop at all, but I don't really care. Uh, Luke Green will bring you back as the seventh. Perfect. And then forward-wise, we're going to have to... Uh, Double check our contract at the end of these signings. Kennan and signs. Johansson, Berglund, Walfordson. We're signing all the Swedes, baby. All the Swedes. Alexis Gravel signed as well. Cool. So like I said, at the very least here, I think what we're going to do is I'm going to take a look at the rosters at the start of the season. Kind of leave things off like we did last night as well. Set up some things off stream. And I think I'm going to go play some Manhunter. Man-eater. I always say Manhunter. I mean, it basically is Manhunter if you think about it. But... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Because Nidimaki will be signed. And then 10, 11, 12. And then Depth. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, we need to sign some forwards. <laughs> we need to sign some forwards. I knew the team Depth still had to be sorted. I didn't realize it was this bad. Uh, Kovalchuk signed somewhere. Remind me to look at that once I'm done signing people, but Kovalchuk signs somewhere. We'll have to take a look. Remember, Snipe wanted to see Hughes' stats. Indeed. I'll have to take a look at that. Uh, do we have prospects? Dryden Hunt. Why not? Sign him up. High bottom six, huh? We can sign. Is this Braden Burke? Yes, it is. Sign him up. I don't think Verano is going to get much better, but I can risk it because we had him last year, so that might be good for the morale. I'm going to sign Michael Dow Cole, too. Why not? So that brings us up to 46. Why do I feel like we have certain people... I guess we do have a lot of uh, exempt contracts. Probably do have a decent amount of exempt deals. Uh, Harry Arabinski. Sign you up. Valentine Nussbomber. Let's go for Houston. Not Terry Houston. To Marion Studnick. The old Studebaker. That brings us up to 50. And I'll hold off from there for the moment. Until we see who else is on the team. Because I might have to shop some people. So, that'll do it for this. Rybinski, Dry Hunt, Dow Cole, Studenick, Verano, Burke, Houstonen, perfect. We'll see where Kovalchuk signs. He'll be on a team. He's a high enough rating. 
We'll see when we look at uh, every team's line combination. So again, we'll set up, uh, oh here, we gotta take a look at our team really quickly actually. See how much we still have to set up. But like line combos and stuff like that, we're not gonna get too heavy into. Uh, McLennan, with him being a junior player, we're not gonna sign him. But Nidimaki is going to be signed. And then nobody else is really worth signing right now, except for Wallstead, but I'm gonna hold off. Do you think the Rangers trade Lafreniere for a top goalie? Potentially, I mean they did just let go of Hank and Shostyorkin. So, I think they still have, uh, I think they still have Georgia, but if they don't, good God. All right, so let's see. We got Hellebuck and Ranta. I'm going to call up Braswa. Berdeen was actually good enough to be the backup. He's going to be our starter this year in the AHL. And defense is now Pionk, Morrissey, Pulak, Chernak. And I think Samberg, Samberg is going to get nudged down for uh, Heinola. He'll be with Niku, and then Pullman is the depth option. But Sandberg could get a chance if needed. We have more defensemen than I thought we did. But the question... Excuse me. The question is how many of them are in junior. In forwards, we have 10, 11, 12, 13 with Harkins. But obviously we want to call up Nidimaki, and then that'll force someone like Perot into being our depth option. So let's just get a vague idea. Chemistry-wise, it's going to change. But just a vague idea of what this team's going to look like this year. We know we're taking out Matthew Perot. Uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe Stevenson will be the scratch. But let's just say we have Perot, Coleman, Cop. Is Stevenson a righty? No. And then third line, Veselin and Nidimaki Roslovich, which I really like. And then Ellers, O'Reilly, Wheeler dropped hard, hard, my God. He was an 89 last year, he's down to an 87, so he's going to be more than likely on that second line, although he and Line A are a better fit if they switch. We'll see, but that top six is still really good since we added Ryan O'Reilly. Defense, we're going to have to switch player types there to make that work, but it's possible. Heinle will probably be a DFD, although he shouldn't be. Mm. Don't know how exactly we're going to make this work, but I at least like the six that we have. What's Wheel's potential? He's 35, dog. Medium top six, so you're going to expect him to drop. Our team's still really good, though. I love the way our team looks right now. I mean, obviously, you use a team like the Jets, you're going to have a good foundation set up to begin with. But the question is... When we sim to the beginning of the regular season, what do other teams look like? What do other teams look like at the start of Season 3? At least I have a personnel in place. I can optimize it a little bit. Let's see what we look like. And quickly, I am going to use the player search here for catcher because he is damn well determined to know where the hell this player ended up. For whatever reason. No results found. Because there was only one end. Fuck. What about now? Uh, yeah, no, Catcher, he's not. He doesn't exist. <laughs> he doesn't exist. I don't know what to tell you. He apparently does not exist. So we go to view lines. Let's see what we got. The Anaheim Ducks at the start of season three. It's Raquel Heinen Dezingle. What does Ryan Dezingle get? Four million bucks for the year. Brandon Sod at 2.7 next to Sam Steele and Silverberg. Chase on Henrik Terry, Milano Zegra, Comtois. So at least they don't have these two as a healthy scratch. Chase on got 2.2 for the next three years. Damn. So Comtois 
and Trevor Zegras, both there. I don't recommend having them on the fourth line. Defense is Lindholm, Petrangelo, Mahora, Manson, Goulet, Larson. Petrangelo signing for 7.5 at three years. It's not too bad. Obviously, that defense looks pretty weird without Cam Fowler. And goalies, Gibson and Halak. Halak signing for 1.6 for the next two years. Gibby, of course, an elite goalie at an 86. Ryan Getzloff is a healthy scratch. Next to Tyler Ennis and Isaac Lundstrom, who I don't recommend having as a healthy scratch. Pablo dropping the gifted sub. You'll love to see it, Pablo. You'll love to see it. Very much appreciated. It's good to see you again, of course. Arizona. Alex Ovechkin, Clayton Keller, and Connor Garland. Ovi signing for 10.1 million, nearly 10.2, for the next two years in Arizona. Next to Clayton Keller and Connor Garland. Second line is to Foley, last year's rookie of the year, Hayton, and Phil Kessel. Phil Kessel and Alex Ovechkin on the same team. Defoley got nearly four million bucks. Kessel's on the last year of his deal. Third line is Schmaltz, Stepan, and Armia. Ina Stroza with Dvorak and Corey Perry. Armia signing for just under six million bucks for this season. That is a really good team, forward-wise at least. Defensively, it drops off a bit, but they have OEL Chikrin, Goligoski, Dylan, Capobianco, and Dmitry Kalikov. Goaltender Kemper and Ivan Prosvetov. So it's all on Kemper now. Healthy scratches, Jesper Foss, Lawson Kraus, and Christian Fisher. But Alex Ovechkin is in Arizona as a free agent signing with Clayton Keller and Connor Garland. Boston. Marshawn Frederick Pasternak. DeBrusque Studnika Kasha. Richie Steen Bjork. Bergeron Coyle Krejci. As the fourth line. Can somebody for the love of God fire this head coach? I am begging you. I am absolutely begging you. The defense is Krug, McAvoy, Grizzly, Carlo, Vakaninen, and Steven Johns. At least the defense is still pretty good, even without Chara. Goaltenders, Tuka Rask, and Jeremy Swayman. And double A goalie of the year. John Moore, Jeremy Lozon, and Connor Clifton as the healthy scratches. Buffalo heading into season three. Reinhardt, Jakaikel, Jeff Skinner, Victor Olofsson, Dom Cahoon, Kyle Pozo, VZ Johansson Cousins. Middlestat, Osplin, and Tage Thompson. Dylan Cousins now on the team, as he should be. Defense is Darlene Risto, Montori, Okiharu, Hunt, and Miller. Gotta love Chiller. And then goaltenders, Anton Hadobin, Carter Hutton. Scratches of Corrali, Bryson, and Saboka. Don't recommend having Jacob Bryson as a healthy scratch, but what are you going to do? Why is uh, Frederick the number one center? Just because of probably how he fits the line better in terms of chemistry. Uh, he is a very physical boy, but not a first line boy. Carolina signed Taylor Hall. They had him on a one year deal last year. They get him at just under $8 million for the next six years. He's next to Sebastian Ajo and Andre Sevechnikov. Second line is Tara Vine and Stahl. Need a rider. Fogel, Trocek, and Derek Grant. Felino, Goodrow. And Morgan Geeky. Their defense, Slavin Hamilton, Bean, Pesci, Gardner, and Votnin. That defense is still stupid. Stupidly good. Goaltenders, Pekka Rene and James Reimer. One year deal with $3 million for the 38 year old. Forsling, Brady Shea, and for the second season in a row in the starting lineup, Martin Natchez is a healthy scratch. They are botching him. But Brady Shea, that's how good this team is. Brady Shea is a scratch. Columbus is Bemstrom, Dubois, Anderson, Nyquist, Jenner, Atkinson, Sanford, Tessier, Borkstrand, Wenberg, Shore, and Aberg. The Pontus Aberg. The Pontus Aberg. Call him what you will, Aberg. Bemstrom up to, a pretty, uh, to an 84. It's 
pretty good for them at this point. 91 offensive awareness, he's going to thrive. How many games did Nate just play last season? That's a good question. That was a good question. 47. Had 8 points in 47 games. Not a good year for him. Not a good year for him. See the defense for Columbus is Wierenski Jones, Nunivara Russell. Two years at 1.8. Gavrikov with Andrew Peake. Goaltenders, Freddie Anderson and Elvis Merzlikens. Merzlikens? Merzlikens. Anderson signing at 7 million bucks for the next three years. At 32 years old, I mean, hey, you can do what you want to do. I actually need to do, hold on. It is Merzlikens. Okay, I had to check Elite Prospects really quickly. <laughs> it is Merzlikens. Healthy scratches of Kirill Marchenko, Liam Foody, and Braden Coburn. Now, I don't recommend having Marchenko or Liam Foody as healthy scratches. But what do I know? I'm just a streamer. The Calgary Flames, your defending Stanley Cup champions... Kachuk, Monahan, Goodrow, Fernland, Lindholm, Backlund, Mangia, Pani, Dubé, Lucic, Jankowski, Soderberg, and Glenn Godin. The defense, Giordano Anderson, Hannafin, Gustafson, Martinez, and Cody Ceci, who has actually improved throughout this franchise mode sim. 2-6 for the season. Jesus. Goaltenders, Markstrom still there. Next to Big Save Dave, who has improved. Healthy scratches, good Budskin, Valamaki, and Bennett. They are butchering Valamaki's development. Butchering it. The Chicago Blackhawks with Alex Nylander, Dylan Strom, and Patty Kane, Kubalik, Barrett, Debrinkit, Smith, Doc, and Shaw, Hagel, Taves, and Lowry. So, first and foremost, I mean, Nylander's an 87. Kubalik's up to an 80, goddamn 9. Uh, Evan Barrett's made it up to an 86, which is insane. Doc only an 83. They're still playing the captain on the fourth line. Of course, we nearly traded for him. Maybe we should have. Maybe he could have led us to victory like O'Reilly didn't. But they also signed Adam Lowry. I would have paid him that, ultimately. But he was going to look for too much. Their defense is Mata Bokvist, Keith Murphy, Graves, and Ian Mitchell has made the team. The goaltender, we already know, this time out. They actually signed two goalies. It's Igor Shostyorkin and Mike Smith. Well, actually, they acquired Mike Smith in the middle of last season. I forgot about that. But yeah, they signed Igor. $4 million for the next two years. Steal of a deal. He's going to be super expensive after that, though. Seabrook, Carlson, and for some reason, Nick Padan as a healthy scratch because the AI is still not smart. But that Chicago lineup's looking kind of good, man, especially the forwards. Colorado. Season 1 Stanley Cup champions. Landeskog, McKinnon, Rantanen, Burakovsky, Kadri, Kaut, Wilson, Yost, Donskoy, Newhook, Kompfer, and the Raffle Copter. So Alex Newhook is there. The defense. Byram Makar. So Bowen Byram's back. They played him in Season 1, and then he played in the WHL again in Season 2. Figure that one out. Imagine winning a Stanley Cup and then going back to Junior. He is with Makar, Gerard Johnson, Demers, and DeMello. Thank God we didn't pay Dylan DeMello that much money. Goaltenders, Henrik Lundqvist. Two million bucks for the season. Next to Pavel Francis. Francis, Francois. Bowers, Savard, and Andy Green as the scratches. Why Shane Bowers is a healthy scratch? I don't know. AHL leading scorer last year or something like that. Dallas, Rupe Hints, Jacques Hughes, and Jason Robertson. What a fucking line that is. Now, Hints started last year on their fourth line. Hit 35 points. They're finally going to play him like he should be played. An offensive force. Jacques Hughes had 53 points last year. He had only 16 points in 33 games from New Jersey in Season 1. And then they have Jason Robertson on the team now. Rightfully so. Although his first year in Texas was a little bit rough. Second line. I mean, Dallas is going with the youth. Pace, thank you for the bit. It's Tufty, Delandria, and Nemesnikov. 
So Dallas is going with a lot of youth in that top six. Third line, Frederick Karlstrom, Tyler Sagan, and Dennis Gurionov. Fourth line, Jamie Benn, Jason Dickinson, and the Wayne Train. This is one of the strangest set of line combos I think I've ever seen. Ben on the fourth line, Sagan on the third line. That's in, that. There's no way that stays, right? The defense, Haskin and Klingberg, Lindell, Alexiak, Sacconi, and Justin Braun. These aren't the preseason lines. This is the beginning of the regular season. This is what they're going with. Cody, you would think, but what are you going to do? Okay, please play 2K10 tonight. I'm not going to do that, but there's a chance we get into playing some 2K sometime soon. Luxiak making 2.6. Goaltenders, Ben Bishop and Kim Talbot. Pavelski, Radulov, and Brassard are all healthy scratched. What is this team on opening day? What is this team? 7 million, 625, and 5.88. Just sitting there in favor of running the youth. Wow. This head coach, man. This head coach has a strategy. And damn it, he's sticking to it. Yeah, these are the regular season lines. This is what they're running. Again, I just hit sim to uh, regular season. And yeah, this is the first day of the regular season. Our first game is today against Philly. So, it is confirmed. It's just insane, though. Let's see, next up, the Detroit Red Wings, featuring Philip Zadina, Dylan Larkin, and Anthony Mantha, Tyler Bertuzzi, Joe Valeno, and Lucas Raymond, Brendan Perlini, Michael Rasmussen, Tara Harose, or Harose, and Gergensen's Fabry, and Reader. So Detroit's looking better. I mean, obviously the emergence of Zadina, Valeno, drafting Raymond, that helped a lot. And then defensively, Chalowski Ronick, Gudis Bowie, Zadorov to Kaiser. That Danny DeKaiser contract, good lord. Their goaltender, Corey Crawford, still there. At 36. 5 million for the next two years. Linus Allmark, the backup. Scratch. Frank, there was some meme picks. Brent Clark, Moritz Sider. And even Gustav Lindstrom, you don't exactly want as a healthy scratch. I don't recommend having Brent Clark and Moritz Sider as healthy scratches, but hey, you can uh, you can do what you want in terms of player development. Feel free. The Ed Money Oilers, featuring Andreas Athanasiu, 96 overall, Connor McDavid and Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Tyler Benson. With 95 overall, Leon Dreisaitl, and 85 overall, Zach Cassian. Nieto, Sezikis, Neal, Archibald, Marotti. And on the fourth line, for some reason, Kyler Yamamoto. That mcdavid Dreisaitl combo is insane. Defensively, Nurse, Clefbaum, Cole Jones, Raimo Tarvainen, and Evan Bouchard. So... Hey, at least Edmonton's smart enough to not scratch a top 10 pick from the last draft. Good on them for finally playing Evan Bouchard, too. Goaltenders, we have uh, Miko Koskinen and Malcolm Saban Man. With TVR, Mayfield, and Matt Benning as scratches. So Ethan Bear is either off the team or in the minors. Florida, fresh off a number one pick. Going with Jonathan Huberto, Sasha Barkoff. And Mike Hoffman, Sven Bershke, Eric Holler, Brett Connolly. Uh, and again, Atu Roddy is there. Nola Chari, Grigory Denisenko, McGinn, Vetrano, and Henrik Borgstrom. So, not a bad group of forwards. At all. I guess it is Ratu over Roddy, but what are you going to do? Oh, God. Fucking Ratu. Yep. Yeah. Damn language. You're you're a real Chesterkin, you know that? 
Um, again, Vetrano Borgstrom, of course, still solid too. Defense, Yandel, Ekblad, Matheson, Weger, Prisky, and Strom. God, they still have Anton Strom. That's, that's a rough time. Goalies, Bobrovsky and Thomas Grice. Could your goaltending tandem be any older? Uh, Sorella, Walmark, and Carter Rowney as the scratches. So Florida could be in for another pretty rough year. Sounds like Maserati. <laughs> Fair enough. Los Angeles with Alex Iafala, Anze Kopitar, and Charles Murata. Sixth overall in the first year draft. Grunstrom, Turcotte, Kempe. You have Rodriguez, Carter, and Brown, Moore, Madden, Kapari. So a lot more of the youth starting to take over in Los Angeles. Where's Knight? Not the main, not on the main show yet, obviously. Brody Doughty, Holtz, Clegg, Mueller, and Roy. So interesting to finally get Cole Holtz up there. Goaltenders, Quick and Cal Peterson. Healthy scratches of Roy Shaw. Third overall pick from this past draft is a healthy scratch next to Gabe Velarde and Martin Furk. Oh, God, the AI is so dumb. So dumb. Minnesota. They're the ones that signed Kovalchuk, because why not make your team even older? Six million for the season. Unbelievable. Stahl, Zuccarello, Fiala, Thornton. Oh my God, they have Joe Thornton, too. Four million. Thomas Tatar, of course. We know he signed. 5.3 for the next six years. Third line, Luke Cunning, Quentin Byfield, Zach Parise. That's a hell of a third line. Matt Boldy with Tyler Bozak and Connor Sherry. Bozak, $2 million. Bucks. Sherry, 4.7 for four years on the fourth line. I mean, it's an interesting Minnesota team, but that is an old Minnesota team. And that's just the forward court. Defense of Suda Spurgeon, Addison Dumba, Pellick, and Manel. It's not too bad. Addison up to an 85. Goalie is Dubnik Kakonen. Donato, Greenway, and Erickson Eck all as healthy scratches. I probably don't recommend that either, but hey. It's not as bad as some other teams. Montreal. Jaden Schwartz, who they acquired via trade. Max Domi, Brendan Gallagher. Drouin, Kokaniemi, and Suzuki. Paling, Dano, Byron, Lekkonen, Rossi, Nason. i got to admit, it's pretty good. That center depth is something. Marco Rossi has made the team. Eighth overall in 2020. The defense. A declining Shea Weber next to Jeff Petrie. Ben Sherratt with Mete. Alex Romanoff with Brett Kulak. So unfortunately that defense really hasn't gotten any better. <laughs> the goaltenders. Carey Price and Caden Primo. Who will prove to be the starter? Both at an 82 at this point in time. Caden Primo is there. Scratches of Kale Flurry, Josh Brook, and Joy. Okay. I don't recommend having Flurry and Brook. Why would you not play Flurry and Brook over Kulak? And probably not Sherratt with the amount of money you got invested, but even then, play the youth. Shit. Is Ben Sherratt that important? New Jersey. Brat, Heesher, Gusev, Bokvis, Sorelli, Palmieri, Zajac, Stutzel, and Merkley, Kwokinen, McLeod, and Kyra. That center depth is honestly pretty good. You've, you've seen the teams before, you know it's shit. I mean... Void, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna let you be angry. <laughs> the defense is Butcher Suban, Ty Smith, Damon Severson, Oosterle, and Walsh. Good stuff. And then goalie wise, it's Blackwood and Ottinger. So again, Ottinger was involved in the Jacques Hughes trade. He's there now. Blackwood up to an 85. Very good for him. Martinick, Wood, and Zaka. As the healthy scratches. New Jersey's looking good. Despite trading Jack Hughes, they're looking pretty good. Nashville, Forspy, Duchesne, Arvidsson, Mikheyev. How much did Mikheyev get from Nashville? Yeah, I wasn't paying Ilya Mikheyev that. <laughs> it was best that we let him go. He's with Johansson and Smith. Craig Smith back up to an 86. Jesus. 
Benino, 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 Turris, and Tolvanen. Rutu, Sissons, and Maguire. So Tuka Rutu, they took uh, in the second round of the 2020 draft. And then Maguire, they just took fifth overall this year. Uh, Cody, if I had to guess, probably not. But who's to say? I don't know what Vancouver did with their goaltending. If they let go of Craig Anderson. And we know they traded Mike Smith. Actually, they did let go of Craig Anderson. So there's a chance. I just don't know if they brought in on the defense. Yossi Ellis, Ekholm, Fabro, Bogosian, and Larson. I mean, they gave Bogosian term, which I don't know why. It is Soros and Bennington in Nashville. Benning oh, my God. Bennington signed for 1.3 for the next two years. The goaltenders or the healthy scratches, Philip Tomasino. You just wish you could go in and set up the AI teams. Like, could, if I could just alter who plays in the NHL or the AHL. But, like, just, God, they're dumb. Back off. Trennan and Cali and croak the scratches. Imagine scratching Tomasino. The Islanders have Bovillier, Barzell, Bailey, Lee Nelson, Simon Holmstrom has made the team. Koivula, Sutter, Eberle, Bellows, Backus, Clutterbuck. So you're promising Koivula, Bellows, and Holmstrom making the team. But you have David Backus on your team. I'm going to go with Jason. What's going on? Thank you for the follow. Oh, Letty Wild, Brodeen, Dobson, McCabe, and Boychuk. So I mean, promising, promising for the Islanders that Dobson and Wild have made the team. Goalies are Varlamov and Skarik, which is also promising. Pajot is still a healthy scratch. He has been healthy scratched for all three fucking seasons. Or all two seasons so far. He has played 20 games. 20 games in two years for Pajot. Fuck. Oh, uh, and then also Wallstrom and Hosang as healthy scratches. Ugh. That is brutal. Rangers, Panarin, Heedle, and Kako. Lafreniere, Howden, Zabanajad. They're dropping a bit, though, in terms of morale. Strom, Anderson, Bushnevich, so Elias Anderson's back with the team. Kreider, Prohorkin, and Maroon. That's a morale thing for the Rangers. Because they played Kreider on the fourth line last year, and he's still a second liner. So this team could be even better, but there's a morale crisis going on with the Rangers for sure. I mean, Panarin was a 93 last season. Defense is Truba Fox, D'Angelo, Lundqvist, Bolu, and Niskanen. So, I mean, great news for the Rangers as Nils Lundqvist continues to get better, as does Adam Fox. And then goaltenders, it's Georgiev. The sole survivor, Alex Georgiev, over Lundqvist, over, I mean, the obvious choice uh, with fucking Shostyork and they went with Georgiev and Tyler Wall. Healthy scratches, Derek Ryan, Brian. We traded them Brian Little for the ninth overall pick. And Nick Foligno. How much money do they have sitting here? 4.3, 5.3, 5.7. That's a lot of money to just be sitting there doing nothing. Maybe that's why the Rangers have a morale crisis going on. The Ottawa Senators, who returned to the playoffs last year, it's Kachuk Tierney Dodonoff. Making nearly nine million bucks for the next four years. Duclair, White, Brown, Balsers, Brown, Ryan, Lawton, Anisimov, and Alex Formanton. Defense is Shabbat, Barry, Brandstrom, Trisdale, Yaros, and Zaitsev. So their defense, at least the top four, looks tremendous. And the goaltending is Leonard and Nilsson. Of course, Leonard returned there last year, six by six basically. Healthy scratches: Batherson, Howerluck. And Yanmark. Don't know if I'd scratch Drake Batherson, but hey, you can do what you want. But yeah, Brady Kachuk's up to a 92. Which is insane. Philadelphia. Giroux. Clued Giroux. Couturier and JVR. Limblom. Stashny Voracek. Stashny signing for 4.4. Yeah, Farabee, Hayes, Konechny, Frost, Patrick, Kubel. Oh my god. 
That's center depth. I don't know why you thought you needed Stashney. And why you'd play him on the second line over Patrick, but good God. Frost on the fourth line is not a good idea either. Defense is... Now, Ghost Bear continues to improve at a better rate than Provorov, which makes no sense. Sanheim, Schatz, Haig, and Philippi Myers. It's pretty good defense, though. Uh, goaltenders, Katahat, and Peter Morazic. Morazic making 1.6. That's a steal. Hard sign for 725 for the next six years. Good old Katahat. Scratches of Tanner Lashinsky. That's not a good idea. He was the top player in the AHL last year. Next to Nick Bjorkstad. Again, Void, if you missed it, it was high elite potential now for Hart, which is insane. Pittsburgh. You have Gensel, Malkin, and Zucker. Hornquist, Crosby, Russ. Crosby's dropping. Tanev, Boyle, <laughs> Matt, Martin. Oh, God, Neanderthal, I, I do do that quite a bit. I do do. I do do. Um, it is kind of fun. It's kind of what I did with Mikheyev, right? Like, you don't let a player drop. The problem is, uh, of course, with him not being an RFA, I ran out of time to flip him. What do you scratch for Philly, Obey Kubel? Uh, let me check. Sam Poulin has made the Penguins. Uh, who do you scratch for Philly? Honestly, you just never sign Paul Stashney. You just never sign Paul Stashney. And that way you can play Lucinci. Why oh, is Jared in 84? Because he's been improving for some reason, even though he's in their bottom six. The defense is Schultz, Latang still, Pedersen, Marino, Edmondson, Hamannick. It's Marino up to an 84. Goaltenders, Matt Murray did sign a contract this year, so he'll take over for Tristan Jerry. Under $4 million for Murray. Gold, or, uh, goaltender just sets uh, healthy scratches. Riley, DeMoulin, and Bortuzzo. Is Pittsburgh still looking decent. San Jose. They were a mess last year. This year they have John Leonard, Tomas Hurdle, and a declining Timo Meyer. It's got to be morale. Evander Kane, Alex Galchenyuk. 5.1 for the year. And Matt Calvert. Levo, Gregor LeBanc, Sorensen, Gambrell, and a fourth line captain. Logan Couture. They are going to tank his overall before he ever has a shot. Look for Logan Couture to retire early. Defense is Carlson and Merkley. Good God. Ryan Merkley steps up in a big time way. It's now Vlasic, Burns, Scandella, and Ferraro. Ryan Merkley has skyrocketed. No, that's a fair point. Ryan Merkley has skyrocketed at this stage. Is their goaltending still garbage? Martin Jones and Jonathan Bernier, yeah, yes it is. Scratches of Simone, Spezza, and Travis Boyd. And then from there, St. Louis. Catcher, I'm going to ignore that question because it's easy enough to find out. Peron, Shen, Tarasenko, Miko, Koivu. Two years for a 38-year-old Koivu. Sure, feel free. Robert Thomas, Ryan Hartman, Blaise, Sunkfist, Kostin, Steen, Barbashev, and Kairu on the fourth line. Better than him being scratched. Again, they kind of sold last year. With Schwartz going to Montreal, we picked up Ryan O'Reilly with Winnipeg. The defense is Dunn, Pareko, Perunovic, Falk, Hainsey, and Harrington. And the goaltenders, Hill, and Jacallan. I don't really want to load up 200 pages of roster docs. I don't really want to answer a question that you could uh, get the answer to. <laughs> because the fuck if I know. Let me roll through the database of my mind. Like I can guess what I put them to, but I don't know. I don't recommend having Nikita Alexandrov as a healthy scratch. Or Hugh McGing, but I mean, you can do whatever you want. Derek Pouliot is a healthy scratch. Probably a good idea, though. Tampa. Palat, Stamkos, Kucherov, Chen, Point, and Radish. Chen was the fourth overall pick in this year's draft. Kachuk, Gord, Joseph, Kaloran, Johnson, and Kajula. What a fourth line. The defense is Hedman, Sergachev, McDonough, Foot, Nemeth, and Juice. Emperor. 
respect. Vasilevsky and Hugo Olnefeld as the backup. High fringe. Stevens, Pissick, Glendening as healthy scratches. Tampa is looking pretty good yet again. Ready for this? Are we ready? The Toronto. I said Toronto. Oh, yay! Hooray! He said Toronto. Yay! Woo! Yay! That's where we live. We live in Toronto. Yay! Shut up. All right. Now that we got that out of the way. Toronto. We have Andreas Janssen, Austin Matthews, and Mitch Marner. Justin Williams, John Tavares, and William Nylander. Zach Hyman, Alex Kerfoot, Jeremy Bracco, Tom Kuhnhockel, Dennis Morgan, and Kasperi Kapanen. So Janssen, still there. 3.2 million. Williams signed for 4.7. Nylander, of course, still under his deal. Zach Hyman signed for a little bit over 5 by 5 Barefoot's still there at 3.3. Brocco's on an expiring deal. Capping in 3 million. His deal's up at the end of the year. Their defense is Morgan Riley, Jake Muzzin, Rasmus Sandin, Travis Dermott, Timothy Liljegren, and Yannick Weber. Did they not sign Borowiecki to a $5 million deal? Did they buy him out, or is he a healthy scratch? Maybe they buried him. But regardless... Good to see Lilia Grin and Sandine finally there. Maybe they'll have some late development. The goaltender, Craig Anderson. Craig Anderson. 40 years young. Even he can't fucking believe it. <laughs> um, and Joseph Wall as the backup. The healthy scratches. Brooks, Sevier, and Mark Borowiecki. Adam Brooks, 25 years old now. You ready for this uh, Borowiecki deal? Oh, that's right. It wasn't $5 million. It was $3 million, but for five years. I was mistaken. I thought it was 5 by 5 But it was, uh, yeah, it was like 3.5 to 3.4 for five years. So, still though, a five-year deal for Borowiecki. He's got four years left. Now he's a healthy scratch behind Liljegren. And fucking Yannick Weber. Earned a job in this lineup over Borowiecki. <laughs> so brutal. The Cove with Pearson, Petterson, Besser, Horvat, Miller, Granlund, Lockwood, Philpula, Pold, Colson, Roussel, Gaudet, and Lind. So I mean, Tanner Pearson, six and a half for four years. Petterson signed, eight million. He's got five years left. Besser's deal is up at the end of this. Mikhail Grandlin signed for 5.5 .5 for three more years, which is brutal. Lockwood and Pold Colson making the team, though. Lind making the team as well is promising. The defense is Hughes, Myers, Tanev, Stetcher, Edler, and Devon Taves. I mean, it's not amazing, but it's solid. Hughes signing for 5.5 .5 for four years. Moment of truth at the goaltending, or not, because we're going to go to scratches first. For Tannen, Olia Levy. And Calvin DeHaan, why the hell would you scratch Olio Levy and potentially stunt that development? His durability has gone up, though. It's now a 67. Braden Holtby and Thatcher Demko. For the Canucks fans that thought I underrated Thatcher Demko, there is your proof that he can still make it. He is an 82 overall. Behind Braden Holtby. I'm not saying that none of my decisions can't be questioned. But I also know what the hell I'm doing. And in terms of giving players a fair rating, we gave Demko a fair rating, and he still made it. He's still a very useful goalie. How often do you see 78 to 82 overall goalies win a cup? You know? I couldn't, you know, I couldn't screw over Thatcher. We still got love for Thatcher Demko around these parts. Two teams left. The Vegas Golden Knights. With Jonathan Marcheseau, Peyton Krebs, and Mark Stone, Pacioretty, Glass, Smith, Nash, Carlson, Tuck, Carrier, Wah, 
and Grabner. That center depth is insane. With Krebs, Glass, and Wild Bill. Jesus. That team is really good. <laughs> Hope he was running the number 69. Fantastic. Theodore Fowler, Schmidt Delzato. Wow, Anaheim. How do you feel about that, Ducks fans? Oof. McNabb and Holden. Nick Holden's still there just to piss off Crystal Pepsi. He's still there. He won't go anywhere. And then goaltenders, you have Flurry and the Farmer in the Dell. Healthy scratches. Ruda, Forbort. I don't recommend having Jack Dugan as a healthy scratch, but hey, you do you. Here we go. Washington. Connor McMichael has made the team. But it's Verona, Kuznetsov, Sprong, Charles, Hudon, Backstrom, and Oshie. I'd swap Hudon and McMichael. Hagelin, Eller, Wilson, McMichael, Foxa, and Ponick. Connor McMichael has made the team. Swap him with Charlie Hudon. You're good to go. In the pre uh, or the post of Etchkin era. Their defense is Orloff, Carlson, Fehervari, and Mike Green. Mike Green goes back to Washington. Murray and Kempney. Murray 3x3. Three three. Mike Green getting paid nearly 3.9 for the year. The goaltender, Ilya Samsonov. Up to an 85 at 24 years old. Vanisek still the backup. Scratches of Siegenthaler, Hutton, and Nick Jensen. So Washington in the post OV era. Still looking pretty good. But what is the story that we learned again? A lot of AI management is horrific because they will scratch prospects for no particular reason. <laughs>